Dapper Draper podcast. I'm your host, Tobias R. Draper, and with me is my guest, Aaron Levitt. And today, uh-huh. we are going to be talking about The Lighthouse. This episode, like all our episodes, contains explicit language and content. Do not be under the age of 18 and listen to this podcast. You have been warned. With that out of the way, let's get into it. Oh, man, I love it. Love it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. My favorite part is when Robert Pattinson came out and he revealed himself to be Martian Manhunter. <laughs> I don't know. I think my favorite part was when he started being like, "You killed my parents in an alley," and you know, beat the shit out of Willem Dafoe's Joker. Yeah, stuff. I love the part where Willem Dafoe <laughs> appeared in one of the dream sequences, and he's like, oh, "The lobster is the key. <laughs> you were right about him." <laughs> anyway, actual movie talk. No, now. Yeah, no like Robert. <laughs> The director, Roger Eagers? Ro- uh, Eggers. Eggers, okay, Eggers. I, I, I knew I was going to botcher that. Uh, Roger Eggers, he, uh, he's really good. Like, wow, I didn't expect him to do a Lovecraftian-esque horror. Because it, it's not extremely, like, it's not completely Lovecraft. Yeah, no, no, like, it, it's Lovecraft in a subtle way, and even then, if you wanted to, you could always interpret the Lovecraft stuff is kind of in your fucking head. That's true, too, because, like, really, when you look at, uh, what's his name, uh, Robert Pattinson's character throughout the whole thing, I can't remember the name of Tom. It. Tom, well, Tom, <laughs> well, they're both named Tom, so, okay, Rob's Tom, Rob Tom. <laughs> Robert Tom. Tom. There's Wob Tom. There's Wob Tom. Tom. There's Wob Tom and Defoe Tom. And so Wob Tom. Defoe Tom. (laughs) Wob Tom. His whole thing is that he he's not a reliable narrator. And I was mentioning this this to you earlier that he's not really a reliable narrator. It's because he is going crazy throughout the whole movie. So who's to say that a good chunk of this movie is just him seeing shit? But, now, I don't think that's completely true, though. I do think some of that is. I think some of what he's seeing isn't true, and it's all in his head, but then a bunch of other stuff is actually going on. We just don't know, because he's just... he's. You can't follow what? him and get a true answer to what's going on, because he is going crazy. He's mad. You well, know? well, I mean, yeah, the whole movie is meant to keep, keep you guessing, like, hey, is this real or is it not real? Hey, is this, you know, which Tom is reliable in any circumstance? And neither of them are. No, so. because Willem Dafoe is this old, tired dude that farts and shits <laughs> everywhere, and pretty much he has... Ah. Like, so all grandpas. Gotcha. <laughs> well, I mean, really, and like he, he, he has a lot of sea talk, and he has a lot of wise wisdom sometimes, but when it really comes down to it, he's, he's just a making, fucking crazy person. Yeah, and he's making Robert Pattinson just clean up all the fucking stuff while he just sits at the lighthouse and jerks off to the fucking light all the fucking time. Yeah, <laughs> and, cooks, and cooks fucking lobster. Yeah, and that's all he does. And like every now and then he makes some shitty water, but I don't even think that's real water. I think that legit they've been drinking like alcohol this whole time, and I don't think that's helping their mental psych, you know, mental case either. Because either that or sea water, which isn't helpful be, either. No, because it's probably got a bunch of sea uh, salt in it and a bunch of other gross ass shit. Uh, it's just like there's. Uh, there's just so much shit going on with this that just helps further just delve into their, like, descent to madness. Like, all the factors mm-hmm. that come into play. Like, the seagulls pissing off uh, Robert Pattinson all the time. Uh-huh. And Willem Dafoe being like, fuck you, you can't kill them because they're fucking... They're, they're, like, the way he puts it is that they're, they're people that died over in the ocean and yeah. in the seas. And so... The whole thing with them is that, like, all the seagulls are the souls of, well, dead people, essentially. Dead sailors. Which, you know, given, you know, the the superstitious nature of Willem Dafoe, I mean, it also, that's another big thing, of him being the unreliable narrator, is that you don't really know if that's true or not, or shit just goes bad, you know? That, yeah. that's That's the big thing, is that... A lot of the a lot of the movie is left up to interpretation, which, I mean, oh, in wow. compared to um, Robert Edgar's last movie, The Witch... Uh, the witch is very overt in a lot of its answers. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, no, Satan's behind it the whole time. <laughs> Whereas in like this, it's like, yeah, you do get shots of like this weird creature and shit. But there's more also, than one. yeah, yeah, more than once, and the fucking, you know, we got so many of these segments where it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. we we do see it, but is it really there? Like, is like, the question okay? Because well, they already, uh, I'm sure they know that we're going to be talking. About, I, I put spoilers on front of 
all titles and shit anyway. And also, so, it's a movie that's two years old. Yeah, it's two years and old. It's, so. And it's in it. And also on Amazon Prime, which is a pretty, it's a pretty dope subscription. You get hey, for, get yeah. get a lot of get a lot of content. You know, you can watch the boys. You can watch Invincible. Sometimes you can watch Clue. I don't know if it's on this month. Maybe you could. Maybe you could see if Clue is on there if you have our today's sponsor, NordVPN. <laughs> so, um, uh, Amazon Prime sponsor us, please. <laughs> um, uh, A twenty four sponsor us, please. Uh, no, uh, but... No, why no, why no, would like, they sponsor? <laughs> well, we are, you know, talking high... We have talked very high praise about a handful of their movies, and we're going to be talking Can't. a lot more about a bunch of movies. Can't wait for that episode for Lamb. Oh my god, I'm so excited for that movie. It that looks so, so fucking weird. weird. It looks so good, though. I know! Um, but back to, like, The Lighthouse, that's something, too, is that, like, who's to say that Willem Dafoe's character isn't leaving all these crazy sprinkles of shit freak Robert Pattinson out and make him go crazy. Because when you see him come up to the, like, the island, he sh- when they first get there, uh, you don't even see the boat, really. You see the front of it in the water. And mm. then they get there, and you see their faces. It's the kind of like a real iconic, like, portrait shot of them, you know, with their stuff and their boxes as they're on shore. Yeah. Then they go in. And then he gets to his bed. Robert, you know, Willem Dafoe's already farting and shit. <laughs> he gets to his bed and he finds a hole. And Willem Dafoe's the one that makes their beds. Yeah, he of course. finds a, a hole in his bed sheets and he starts pulling hairs and shit out. And yeah. that mermaid, uh, like, doll thing. <laughs> and what's fucked up AKA about... AKA 1800s porn. <laughs> yeah, 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 really. But what's so fucked up about the hair... Now, th- th- this is why... Uh, th- this is where things get crazy. So, like, later on in the movie, he... He pulls, like, he finds that head of the guy that Willem Dafoe had with him last when he was last on this island with this lighthouse, and he, mm-hmm. he killed this guy. And so what's so fucked up is that, like, if he killed that guy, did, like, he stuff a bunch of his hairs in the fucking bed, like, trying to hide body parts all over the fucking lighthouse, and he only found the head in the water? Or, like, what the hell? Because he does find a bunch of loose hair, like, black, thick hair in mm-hmm. the bed with the doll. Um, what do you think about that? Uh, in terms of how I could interpret that, because, like, I'm not exactly sure. I mean, Willem Dafoe is crazy. Of course he would do, like, crazy, stupid, weird, random shit, of course. But whenever it comes to that, I would say that that's actually something that's overtly left by the last people that actually did this. Because they... Uh, because, because a lot of, of course, a lot of this movie's up to interpretation and shit. Right, yeah. So, I'm more than willing to believe that probably one of the previous, uh, Lighthouse Watchmen had probably left that in the bed of, hey, in case you go crazy, here's this random doll and shit yeah. that you could, because, you know, you aren't gonna be able to touch a woman for probably <laughs> a year. Um. Well, Willem Dafoe, in the movie, he does bring up, because, like, the, Robert Pattinson's like, what happened to, like, your last guy that was here with you, your second, you know, the, mm-hmm. the guy before me. And Willem Dafoe's all like, oh, he started talking about sirens and all that. He went mad and he just started talking about all this crazy nonsense. So mm-hmm. the thing is, is like if his last buddy that he killed, because he clearly Ooh. killed him, because Robert Pattinson calls him out on it, he goes, you killed oh. your last mate. Oh, and he's wait. Like, yeah. Uh, what? What do you think? Maybe, um, Maybe that was originally Defoe's, and he took it for himself. And when Defoe had like found out, and once eventually went crazy and murdered him, you know, like maybe that's where he was hiding it and shit. You know, he maybe that's took it, took out place. a bunch of his hair and stuffed it inside the bed and hid it from him. Yeah, and yeah. before he could do anything with it again, Defoe cuts his head off. Yeah, yeah, okay, I could see that. Maybe like what happens there. Maybe what happened there is that the he wasn't running the lighthouse the last time. And so now that he has the chance to do it, he's already kind of went crazy and done all the stuff that Robert Pattinson's about to go through the whole fucking movie. Yeah, of course, uh, except this time it doesn't end well for him. No, no. Because Willem Dafoe, like, don't get me wrong, he had to kill somebody, but then, like, like he gets to leave and go back and get another guy, Robert Pattinson, and mm-hmm. come back. And, so, and, okay, and that brings up the whole theory thing, because we kept talking about all the theories we have for this. Because we've, mm-hmm. I've watched this at least three or four times in the past week, and you've seen it before, and then we yes. just watched it again. Yeah, no, this is my second time watching it all the way through. It was my third time, and I had just watched it last night, too. 
so it's still pretty fresh in my mind for the most part. I just can't remember. Whatever Pattinson's name is, uh, he calls himself Winslow, but that's, that's a fake name mm-hmm. because he's hiding from something. And it has a lot to do with his dad, who you do see Willem Dafoe shapeshift into a couple of times. Whether he actually is or probably <laughs> well, going crazy. Well, well, I would say probably going crazy on that. I think he's going crazy because every time that he lays a punch or something on him, he's turning into his dad and then turning into the siren that he wants to fuck and then turning into the sea king that Willem Dafoe keeps talking about with his sea talk. Because mm-hmm. he talks like a... Legit, he talks like a pirate. That's why I was telling you earlier, I was being like, why don't they which, just have Willem Dafoe in a pirate movie? Which, like, uh, in an impressive feat is that uh, the director went into uh, painstaking research into the olden era and Ooh, researched yeah. exactly how people uh, speak, uh, spoke back in that era to uh, accurately capture this. You know, it's a bit of a, you know, it is a period piece. It I would shows. Say. It shows. It's yeah. really good. Like, mm-hmm. I think that, I, th- I think in the next, like, 10, 20 years, this is going to be, like, the Lighthouse will be, many A24 movies, I think, are going to be considered cult classes. Like, like we do with Stanley Kubrick uh, movies now. Well, I mean, yeah. I, mean the, I mean, the Lighthouse is like two years old, and I mean, fuck, even when it was like barely a few months old, it was already in that status. Yeah, it was already kind of a cult classic that people was just like, couldn't get enough of. And to be fair, I mean, we're talking about it now, and we're, we're obsessed with the same thing. I, I, I kind of <laughs> think that's why Prime, Amazon Prime has never actually gotten rid of it, it to Just my knowledge good. yeah cause not only do they know it's good they also know that a lot of people came in here to watch it you know it's kind of like the whole wonder woman 1984 thing where <laughs> people got the free trial just to watch on hbo max i feel sorry for all of you by the way but we'll do an episode on that yeah. later <laughs> but well, so like another thing too is that like okay so he okay so he, he first after willem dafoe tells him all about the crazy shit and it's like, oh, well, my other mate, he saw sirens and shit, and he just went crazy, and so I had to get rid of him, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, after he says that, it's nighttime, and Willem Dafoe's watching the lighthouse, it's the first night, and he's watching the light, and he strips naked in front of it, and he's drinking, and he's drunk, and he's just sitting there, and he's calling it beautiful and all this stuff. We don't know what he's seeing. Mm-hmm. We never really know what Willem Dafoe's seeing throughout the whole movie. And so that's something we'll get to... We'll get to why that's interesting yeah, later. He's looking so, at the cameraman. <laughs> really? Yeah, well, yeah, but like, you know what I mean. Like, he's, he's just kind of sitting there and just going, he's already crazy. So he's just, whatever, just drunk, having a blast, just sitting naked in front of this damn thing, jerking off yeah. in front of this light, really. Yeah, re- re- really love that scene where he looked at it and he said, Godspeed, Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> Man, what a turn that would be. Yeah, of course. So, multiverse confirmed. To- uh, Toby Maguire. <laughs> Toby Maguire and Willem Dafoe Toby in the Ma- lighthouse. Toby Maguire's the siren. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. Oh my god, Instead the of- the rogue editor that just puts fucking Toby Maguire's face on like the siren sex scene. Oh my god. Have you seen like have you seen the video making fun of the No Way Home trailer where like at the end when it shows Doc Ock, he's getting ready to say hello Peter, and then you see Toby Maguire run him over with a car. And he looks over and goes, dude, we're in traffic. Get out of the fucking way. There are cars there, motherfucker. And then he goes off, dude, no, I haven't. I, I thought of that, that whenever the siren shows up. I thought of that scene where, like, you see the siren and it starts laughing instead of going, ah, like, flip with that creepy sound it's got. Instead of doing that, it's Tobin Bogart going, there are cars there, motherfucker. Get out of the way. <laughs> But <laughs> the deleted scene to see biscuit you never thought existed. <laughs> Lighthouse, the MCJ cut. <laughs> Mick G cut, the Mick G cut. This sounds like a goddamn McDonald's item. <laughs> well, you know Mick G, he doesn't. Mick G. Like, I like Terminator Salvation, but he's never really made a good movie. Mick G. Like, <laughs> That's his name. That's it's his like name. A, I know, but it's like a 90s rapper's name. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, like. Basically, he talks about the whole mate being... A- after he tells the mate all about, oh, hey, I saw this, you know, fucking... You know, my old mate went crazy thinking he was seeing sirens and he stuff like that. call himself Mick G. <laughs> <laughs> well, he kept talking about that, and as soon as he tells him that, and that first night he's naked looking at the light, and then Robert Pattinson's looking at the water, and he starts seeing all these weird rocks moving around, and when they separate, he sees his dead. he sees a dead body in the water. Now, you don't know this when you're watching it, because at first you're just like, what the fuck is going on? Later on, he elaborates that he he has some issues with his dad. That was his dad uh, in his head. And Mm -hmm. then he 
almost drowns. And here's what's so crazy is that he almost drowns because he goes too far into the water and sinks, and he sees the siren. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't start seeing this shit until Willem Dafoe fucking mentions the last guy going crazy, seeing the same shit. And so, what's so interesting is that as soon as he says that, like, four hours pass, <laughs> and then he goes out to look at the water, and he sees it already is starting to go crazy. Now, whether he was drunk and was just seeing shit is left to interpretation because they are drinking the entire time they're on this island at this lighthouse they're super drunk all the Mm -hmm. time and another thing too to add on because i know that we're trying to add on to the pile of all the reasons why someone would go crazy they have multiple layers there yeah like for one thing eating lobster all the goddamn time for about like they're there for a few months that's but they never really say how long but it is at least a month or two so, or maybe a week? <laughs> yeah, or maybe a week. Like they, they, We'll get to that. We'll mention it, because they talk about that. But, time at time is not linear. <laughs> no, no. And like, uh, so, like, what's so crazy is that the whole time, they're just... Like, they're eating this lobster, and I think that factors into it, because all they're eating is this fucking lobster that's probably cooked in some boiled seawater, yeah. and all they're doing is drinking this vodka and rum and shit, just getting trashed as shit, eating lobster, and you even see that when they make that first toast together, they're not drinking water, they're drinking vodka. Yep. They're, you know, they're, they're just getting trashed as shit. And so, them being super drunk, alone on this island, isolated, and then they also get stranded in a sense, because as soon as, as, soon as the bad shit, like, things go south, when Robert Pattinson... <laughs> kills a seagull. Yeah, that's just the first of many. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing is that they keep pissing them off. And Willem Dafoe mentions, he goes, look, they're the souls of, you know, dead sailors that died in the seas and in the oceans, so it's bad luck just to kill one. It's just bad luck to fuck with them, so just leave them the fuck alone. Of course. And so, and Robert Pattinson, like, he's just going crazy the whole time, and then, like, the Finally, like, one of them just pisses him off too far, and he grabs it and just kills the shit out of it. It's very satisfying. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it is. <laughs> I'm not going to lie about that. But also, just real quick, I wanted to discuss one minor thing that actually kind of leads into the bad luck with the seabird thing. I actually kind of think that that probably holds some truth to it. Mostly because this one bird has been intentionally just fucking with him. Oh, the it's time. Him off. Yeah. yeah, knocks on the fucking window at night, keeps him from sleeping, fucking gets in front of the door, like squeals this bird at him. Yeah, no, like, it, it's looking. Man, this reminds me of that. <laughs> going back to the witch there for a second, it reminds me of that fucking rabbit when yeah. they're hunting in the yeah. woods and just stares them down. <laughs> it's like Robert Eggers has like a thing for like the creepy animal that's like, I'm coming for you, you son of a bitch. <laughs> that's the thing. He really knows how to like uh, add layers to all kinds of stuff involving like uh, psychology and really going mad and even the supernatural. Because. Like, okay, in the, like, the the witch is, the witch movie isn't really, like, a Lovecraftian style thing. No, right? no, no, it's more or less like, hey. It's, it's more a Salem, if anything, it's got that Salem witch vibe to it, in a, in a sense. Like, yeah. it's not exactly that, but it does have, it's a witch. I mean, I mean, it's a witch tormenting a fucking New England family that's right, been right. out, that's been ostracized and shit. Yeah, which, yeah. holy shit, get, man. <laughs> <laughs> this, you know, at this point, we should probably do an episode on that movie at some point. Cause... We'll have to. I need to rewatch it. I've only seen it once. I have uh, seen it twice, but, uh, but it's been it's so long. It's been it's, so long. Well, that's the thing. A twenty four doesn't really make bad movies. They don't make bad films. <laughs> and... <laughs> Let's wait until Lamb. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't Save think that. Lamb's gonna be bad at all. That'd be, man, it'd be really funny. Just, just Lamb is just absolutely just dog shit. <laughs> I think it's gonna be great. I really do think it's gonna. I, I don't, I don't, I don't doubt that it will, that it, um, I don't doubt that it'll be bad or anything. Didn't they 24 didn't they do Hereditary as well? They or did didn't they have a hand? Yeah, yes. I was thinking they had a hand well, in that. Well, I think the way A24 works is that you, uh, because I tried to actually, because I write screenplays and stuff like that, and I'm always trying to figure some shit out with trying to make yeah. a movie. I, I can't do it now, but I do always look into it. And the way, from my understanding, A24, they really, they don't make the movie, like, you would see Disney do with Marvel or with Warner Brothers with Justice not, League. Not under strict super um, supervision or anything. Like no, that. no. Well, A24, you come to them with a movie you already made, and then they give you the money to market it and all that other stuff. 
Com- and complete freedom. Like, hey, <laughs> like. <laughs> it's an art, you know. They get it. They understand that it's an art. Like film is an art. You shouldn't be trying to mess with the director's vision, and that's important. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, at at this point, I, I I'm I'm not saying this to flack anything or anything, but it, they do have that mentality of literally, if anyone walks in with an idea that's intriguing enough, they will take it. Like, hey, this New England family's tortured by a witch. Oh, hey, we'll greenlight it. Hey. <laughs> two famous actors are stuck in this lighthouse for, you know, months, yeah. days, maybe weeks. Um, and, sure. you know, we'll, we'll go ahead and green light it. And then finally, oh, hey, I want this one where a lamb gives birth to a lamb human. Yeah. Throw some money at it! <laughs> well, then you also look, you can even throw Green Knight into the mix of that, because it's literally The Shining, just Gawain and King Arthur shit. Yeah, it, that's literally what it is. Yeah, no, it, honestly, the Green Knight is very Kubrick esque oh, with how, yes. with not only how it's done, with how it's, it's can, film. yeah, with how it's filmed, the camera work specifically. So some of the score harkens back a little bit to uh, Kubrick, and as well as a lot of the how all of his movies were very much up to interpretation, yeah. save you know a couple examples, of course. But mm-hmm. honestly, yeah, yeah I, I think The Shining comparison is fairly apt. But yeah, yeah, uh, I agree with. Uh, I think it's a good comparison because I remember we were watching it and I was like, man, the further we get into this, the further I'm feeling like we are in this like, like, because okay, you look at the Shining movie, the Kubrick version. Mm-hmm. The whole idea there is that we're really having a. This is like it was one of. The, it's not the first, but it was one of the first character studies on going crazy. Yes. And I don't, I don't think it's the first, but I think it kind of popularized it. If anything, I would say it was it, either it, it, a taxi driver. even if it wasn't the. first, First, uh, I would definitely say a bar none is the most iconic. It was exactly. out, out of everything ever done. I would say it's the most iconic. Taxi Driver, yeah, I mean it is iconic and it does do the whole going crazy thing fairly well. But I would definitely say The Shining is very yeah, much yeah. like because because fucking Robert De Niro and Taxi Driver, he's already fucking nuts. Yeah, yeah. Whereas like Jack Torrance, he's like a guy. I mean, he's had you know alcohol problems and he's you know abused his son and alcoholic rages, but he's never exactly meant it. And you know, considering Jack Nicholson's you know charm in of itself, it's like, oh hey, you know, this is just a normal guy, and it's then he goes crazy. <laughs> well, there's a charisma to Jack Nicholson. You know, yeah. he's very charismatic, and especially back then, he was. He was he was just getting big. Yeah. And, uh, like, he was just... Like, didn't he just... No, he, had, he didn't play the Joker yet. Like, uh, no, uh, 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 no, uh, no, no, yeah, This is nine no. years before that. But that's yeah, I think, of, yeah, I think he already did one Who Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Either that yeah. or, like, uh, one other movie that's escaping my mind right now. Well, he had done a bunch of yeah. uh, movies at the time. He even was in, like, a... Man, we found this. When we first moved into that house I'm at right now, when we first moved into there years ago, there was a bunch of stuff left behind by the old owners, and one of them was this really, really old copy of this vampire movie that Jack Nicholson was in. It's not good. Oh, <laughs> it's really bad. But like, like the, and I don't mean bad because like the how old it is and the quality. I mean like all that, but also like genuinely, this is just could, a bad movie. Could, could, <laughs> could, it took, could it took a dark turn there. It's like I went inside this house, and then there was this picture of how many people were at this house before me, and then when I die, I'm going to join them. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like so, like that's why I kind of have that comparison with Green Knight in The Shining because it really is because while okay, The Shining is like a character study on going uh, someone going crazy and being isolated in this big fucking hotel this huge giant hotel Mm -hmm. that has already suspicious things about it you know green knight is about a guy who's essentially going crazy uh on this journey to die yeah that's the whole movie it's a i mean it's also like a study on honor and what technically makes you honorable at the end of the day yeah well the whole movie is about like each trial he goes through is the five stages of like the five virtues of knighthood and I have an episode about that where I mentioned it, and I do talk a lot about it, where it is, like, like, like with Thief and all that stuff, like, everything. That the, he, the Thief, the Headless Woman. Yeah, like, the... but, but what's so crazy about that is he fails. Yeah. Every single what? one, except what? at the eh. end. Okay, he, he, didn't fa- he didn't fail the Headless Woman one. He was rewarded for that, because no, 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 he got no. his axe back. No, he failed. And it was because, okay, so he, whenever he goes up to the pond... Uh, he's asking her, what will I get in return for getting your head? She's like, what the fuck, man? Why are you just being nice and just help me get my fucking head? He's trying to get something in return for it. He failed that test. Because he was expecting something in return. And, the, okay. I, I mean, I, I mean, he, I mean, he did get 
the X back. Bro. Yeah, but, like, that's the thing. He failed, okay, so, like, there, he failed uh, chivalry, essentially. Ah, yeah. uh, Because he wasn't trying to be, like, good for good's sake and just being kind to their, his fellow man. He was just being like, what will I get? You gonna, like, are you gonna give me information on the three night stuff? And she's like, dude, the fuck? Just keep in my head, damn it. Yeah. And so that's kind of why. But, uh, oh, we gotta go, okay, back to the, so, like, back yeah, to the, I know. so um, the whole thing there, like, uh, okay, so there's a scene that, like, really fucks with me, and, like, well, a lot of stuff in this, that's, that involves sex does fuck with me, because there's a lot of sex stuff in this, because it's about two guys going crazy at this island, especially since, you know, Robert Pattinson's but, got this mermaid thing. Not much to entertain you back then. No, you don't have any <laughs> magazines. Nope. Uh, you you pretty much write in a journal. You drink like like we were saying. All they're doing is eating lobster, and <laughs> they're just eating lobster and drinking vodka all the time. It could, it, could, it it probably isn't vodka, but it's some alcoholic beverage. I'm just saying it's vodka because it's clear, and that's yeah. the only thing I can think of. Is they're not drinking water. I mean, I mean it's I mean I mean yeah. In in all honesty, there ain't really much. To, I mean I mean it also also the fact that it's black and white. And, of course, there's not yeah. really going to be much color to it. So, yeah, no, I'm willing to more or less believe it's either vodka or probably, at one point, I would like to interpret that they would probably eventually just go mad by drinking seawater because yeah. they just run out of shit to drink. And to be fair, I, I, do, I don't think there was much knowledge of that back then about mm, yeah, how probably not. seawater and salt water could be to, well, your body. <laughs> um, Hopefully they got it. Uh, like a little bit before they dumped shit inside well, yeah. the seawater. Either that or the other side of the island. <laughs> well, I mean, back then, they uh, back in like the 1700s and stuff, they were not good with sanitation at all. Like, there was a point I remember in history that I read about where uh, their water, the reason why there was so much infections and people were dying of sicknesses and stuff is because the same water that they were using to like clean their, di- like, clean their stuff and like clean their clothes and also drink <laughs> was water they were pissing and shitting in. All the time. Yeah. And, like, washing their hands and stuff in. Like, I, I, I mean, to get realer for a minute, has humanity ever really been good at keeping things sanitary? No, I mean, especially in the times we live in now, like, that's it's just another testament to just... Good old Delta! Yeah, well, yeah, but, like, so, they ain't clean. Especially since it's just two dudes at this lighthouse, like, and one of them is cooking and filling up shit with vodka, and that's about it. Whereas Robert Pattinson's kind of cleaning up all the work, and so and yeah, that's the thing is uh, so he gets yelled at a bunch by Willem Dafoe for not doing stuff, and it's like you're not doing much yourself, old man. I know you're 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 down a leg, but come the fuck on. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you can pump water and clean shit. Bro. You also could have probably stopped that seagull from going inside our clean water filter. Oh yeah, yeah. That, well, that's the thing. He sees that, and that's kind of what makes him. Like, fuck you, I'm going to kill this fucking seagull. But as soon as he kills the seagull, the wind changes. And mm-hmm. everything, well, everything just goes south. Uh, well, I mean, everything's already going fucking crazy and weird. Actually, actually everything goes north if you look at the company. Oh, well, yeah. yeah <laughs> okay, so everything kind of goes north. But, so, like, what's so messed up about that is that, like, he's getting yelled at all the time by Willem Dafoe. And Willem Dafoe's really just going to the lighthouse and just jerking off and laying there drunk in front of this fucking light which by the way i'm gonna go ahead and mention even though you don't really see it till the end that light that they like the design they have for the glass light that is in the lighthouse what a beautiful design honestly yeah it it makes it makes me think of like one of those artistic music videos yeah 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 yeah. like like, kind of reminds me of the um elton john benny and the jets music video if you've ever seen that it very much reminds me of that plus the the black and white feel helps it quite yeah. a bit. I'm glad they went with the black and white aesthetic with this, especially since I, because I was telling you about this whenever uh, we were watching it today, was that the uh, Robert Pattinson, <laughs> if in color, you, you don't know this, but uh, if, for those of you listening, in if the movie was in color, Robert Pattinson's clothes would be the blue overalls, and the clothes he's wearing underneath is actually red, like even his hat, and he, with the mustache and everything, he looks exactly like Mario. Exactly like Mario. <laughs> Seriously, I can't imagine trying to act uh, serious with that. Yeah, oh no, like uh, okay. There's that, and plus there's also just the factor of well, if they were, that would just show you how committed to it they they fucking were. That's true. That's yeah, true. Because c- neither of them probably giggled at that. But I mean, 
Willem Dafoe is probably used to that, plus he has done way more ridiculous shit than that. I mean, come on, look at Green Goblin. I mean, not that it's ridiculous, but like the well, Okay, like, okay. It is ridiculous, but, not but that does way. not make it bad. It's not even in a bad way. It's like, it's a comic book movie. So like, it's just, it's silly. And, and a Sam Raimi one at that. Yeah, so like, it's got that silliness to it, but not the silliness that doesn't work. It's kind of, it's, it, it, there's a realism to it, but it's also like, it's still comic booky, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, of like, course. that's the thing. He he has done weird shit like that before, too. Hell, come on. If you really want to get technical, look at fucking Antichrist. Like, yep. He, like, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, that'll be a whole other episode. Eventually. Smashed balls yeah. and talking foxes. You were telling me about that. because <laughs> Well, I talked to Gabe the other day because he mentioned Antichrist, and I was like, me and Sarah are wanting to watch that. We still have it. We're going to. I don't know when. I'm I'm, I'm, tr- I'm treading like water. I'm scared. You know, Man, I'm going to ask Sarah so much about your reactions to that if I'm not there. Well, I told her, I, I told Sarah, I was like, don't get me wrong. I'm willing to watch fucked up movies with you. But like, if there's a fucked up thing that happens, I will, and I have to look away, I will do it. And you cannot force me to watch it if it's too fucked up. <laughs> And she was like, that's fine. You got to do what you got to do. And I was like, I'll, I'll, I'll toughen through it, man. I'll toughen through any movie I watch with you. But, man, just, I don't, like, I'm, it's fucked up. And so, like, I'm dreading it a little bit. Yep. But the, 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 the thing that has my curiosity, and it, it was the same thing with White House, with both Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe in this movie, was what drew them to this. You know, what, like, what drew Willem Dafoe to Antichrist? Like, what got him so invested in the idea of doing something well, like that. And it's the same thing with Lighthouse. Well, uh, here's the thing. I'm not flacking Defoe for this at all, but I truly do think he will do anything. It's like, like in all honesty, I'm not even like... He's so versatile. He, he, not only is he versatile, but, you know, he's, he's kind of in that camp that I would like to call the I-can-make-shit-good camp, which yeah. is like, you know, actors like Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. You know, where it's like, hey, I'm in a bad movie, but I am the best part of said bad movie. <laughs> Same with, like, yeah. uh, fucking Tim Curry and the like. Yeah. Where it's like, yeah, they will make it work no matter what. Well, that's the thing. I don't even think... I haven't seen it yet, but I don't even think Antichrist is a bad movie from what I've heard. It's just a fucked up, really fucked but, up movie. Well, yes, of course. With a, lot, with a controversial director, with controversial ways of... Filming such hey, Hence things. why it's not widely talked about. Exactly. Because, well, it's one of those things, Lars von Trier, he's like Kubrick if he was... If he just, truly had no limits. No, yeah. If he just had no limits and was just fucking nuts. Because even... Well, even then, Kubrick barely had any limits because Clockwork Orange is more than enough proof that that man will put anything on yeah, screen. Yeah, you know, well, that's a, well, to be fair, Kubrick, you know, like, he, he just... He was very meticulous and like very methodical, and he was always trying to tell a new story with a new risk. He was always trying to do something different and push the envelope. I'm not opposed to that. That's why I like art house films. That's why, like, look at Lighthouse. There's so many scenes where like Robert Pattinson alone is just wanking it, just jerking off. I can't tell you how many times you see his ass in this. You you see it quite a few times. Specifically four times. I counted. So anyway, <laughs> no, I didn't actually <laughs> count. <laughs> I thought you did. But it like, is, although rough estimate, it probably is just four. <laughs> but, like, what's worse, too, is that, like, you look at, like, okay, so there's even a scene where Robert Pattinson goes up to the lighthouse. And keep in mind, the way to get to the light, it's locked, and Willem Dafoe has the key the whole time. That's important. That's important to the play. Not the play. The plot. Uh, and so, like... This would make a bitchin' play. It would make a great play. Yeah. You only need two actors... That's it. <laughs> That's really it. You yeah, can, like, t- two actors in a squid costume. This would be a great play, especially since like the per- like the lines and like the scenes. This it'd be a great play, kind of like how the Hateful Eight. I think that would be a great play too, because it's filmed and staged like one. Um, have you you've seen that? Right? The, yes, I've seen that. I think that that works as a play. <laughs> Fuck, that makes me miss theater. <laughs> I'm in theater. It's, <laughs> I haven't. It's it's rough, but. Uh, uh, I, mean, yeah. I mean, high school theater. Like, oh, well. Well. Yeah, I, I, liked, I liked that old theater regiment we had in Willow County. Uh, I liked Mr. David Sweet. He was a great guy. Shout but, out to uh, him. He's awesome. Shout out to him. Uh, He's retiring this year. Makes and me sad. He should be He should be directing movies. Dude. He, he should, he should be the president of the United States. Yeah, <laughs> such a great guy. I love that dude. But uh, this ain't an episode about him. Uh, we could have one, though. <laughs> 
Wouldn't you get a kick out of that having a whole episode dedicated to him? I, I don't know. I think he would probably message us both and be like, what in the hell are you two doing? <laughs> Take the episode down now. Hell, I'd probably do that with this one. Why'd you talk about my beard for 40 minutes? <laughs> that would be great, though. Um, Where are we talking about the lighthouse? But, 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 like, so, okay, so he sees Willem Dafoe, and what's going on is that he's, he can't get into the top, and Willem Dafoe's there naked. You don't see, all, all you see is Willem Dafoe's legs and feet, and he, Willem Dafoe's jerking off. And you start seeing jizz going through the little, little holes of the floor. But what's crazy is after a little bit, it starts being even grosser and thicker. And then he, Pattinson looks up again, and it's tentacle shit. And it's all this <laughs> fucked up, crazy, demented, like Cthulhu monstrosity stuff. Yeah. And so what's, what's, what I think with that... I guess we're going to delve into theories here. Man, but, man, I might as well. Let's, might as let's, well. let's get into this section. So, okay, so... This kind of starts my theory with... There's multiple theories I have for this, because I actually don't... I, I legit... I'm just going to be clear with the audience. I actually don't have a definitive answer for what the fuck is going on in this movie. I have, like, two or three theories that I can believe, but each one kind of contradicts each other. And so it's... And this movie is very, very left interpretation. It just kind of throws shit at you, and you have to kind of just... The, the only thing we know for certain is there's two dudes in a lighthouse. <laughs> Going crazy. That's yeah. That's about it. That's all you uh, got. Yeah, that's the premise. Mm -hmm. but, but that's it. That's, <laughs> that's the, the only thing. thing you're promised. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, so, okay. Um, you see all that jizz and stuff, but at first it's just little droplets and stuff, and then after a while it's just... And it's stuff that you would... It's sticky, but it's, like, it's stuff that, like, you would find on a real sticky octopus, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, their kind of pus, like, their gooiness, and it's not exactly jizz, so, like... My and he does later on in the movie, whenever he's like, "You, you're fond of me, lobster." You, know, he's like, "You're fond of me, lobster." And Robert Pattinson's like, "If I had a steak, I, I, I would, I would fuck it." <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's great. It's Full a great on scene. American Pie style, <laughs> baby. But like, it's it's a great scene. It, like the performances in this, Robert Pattinson. Well, oh my god! Wow, I, I, I uh, liked him in other movies. I love him in this. Uh, it's not like, in all oh, honesty, God. if there is one actor that I am definitely proud of that made it out of the Twilight staple, it's, it's, it's definitely him. Absolutely, like, oh my uh, God! Like, I am, I am honestly glad. Okay, one, I am glad he's Batman. Me too. I'm, I'm glad he is Batman now. I, I think am, he's gonna do a great job. There is one movie that I've heard so much about that I want to watch. Uh, it's called Good Time. Where he, um, I believe he plays a drug dealer trying to, like, get his brother out of a bad situation. And it was, from what I have heard about the movie, it's really fucking good. It is. And it's, it is. like, I've, I've heard that it's, like, the highlight of his career thus far. It is. It is. Uh, it's the one, if it wasn't for that one, he wouldn't have gotten Lighthouse and Batman and a bunch of other roles he's gotten in, you know, subsequent years. Mm -hmm. Um. But uh, that's the thing. He's very much a stand-up performance that's in this. That's not to say that Willem Dafoe isn't great in this either. Willem Dafoe, that, like, I'm telling you, make him a fucking pirate in a movie. Because he talks just like a fucking sailor. Make, make him, yeah, not like, not only make him a pirate, yeah. uh, literally make him anything. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's, so, he's he, such a good actor. He would, uh, honest to God, pull it off. I'm honestly surprised he has never been like an overt horror movie antagonist. Yeah. Since, yeah. like, they're both kind of antagonists in this film, there's really, like, nobody you essentially root for. Yeah, yeah. Well, the whole movie, like, uh, they're both, especially since they're the only two in the whole movie. Well, well yeah, I mean, I mean, outside of two I, extras who are there for, like, a second and then leave. <laughs> and the siren. But, like, really... Well, okay, yeah, and the siren. Like, and even then, like, they're really the only two saying anything. Oh, and, um, fucking Robert Pattinson's dad. <laughs> uh, he, he, yeah, that's right, his dad, too. Uh, even though... Look, but that's the thing, Robert Pattinson and William Defoe are the only two people saying anything throughout yeah. this whole movie. They carry the whole film. And, they're, and it's one of those things, like, with a movie... Like, there's so many ways this could have went fucking wrong. There's so many ways this movie could have went to shit. Yes. Like, so All like, you had to do, like, it, because it, there's only two people really in this movie that are really talking about If you about didn't get a good actor for this, 
Like two good actors for this, it would Bump. fall the fuck apart. Yeah, like, <laughs> uh, like that's the thing. If if it had had the wrong director, if it had had the wrong like like you could have had Willem Dafoe and some other completely different actor. And like, Shy Courtney. Ah, uh, <laughs> oh, uh, well, yeah. Sorry, I don't. I just don't. Uh, do yeah, that. yeah. Shia LaBeouf wouldn't have done good <laughs> in this one. Like, imagine if that had happened, and it was Willem Dafoe and Shia LaBeouf. Willem Dafoe would have been like doing great fucking shit. Shia LaBeouf would have been. Can you imagine having a scene with him jerking off like what? the movie thing? Like what? that would. Like I don't see it. Uh, I mean, I mean, hey, he's good in holes. He's good in holes. I don't like that. Why? Because what the fuck? Because everybody talks about it so much, and it's not <laughs> that impressive. It's okay, it, fun. okay, it's not. But like of the Disney live action movies of the time, that's like the only good one. It's fine. It's not great. Like I don't. I wouldn't write home about it. Like if I had to choose between holes and this. I'm well, I mean, of course this. you're choosing this. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and, and like to go even further with holes, I get man, people are gonna hate me for this because this is something that no one knows about. But like so. We, we are good, man. If it wasn't for this, if it wasn't for Holes, Shia LaBeouf wouldn't have gotten a career, and he wouldn't have been in these. Ah ah ah! Nope, nope. Really? Even Stevens. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. yeah! <laughs> That's not better. But no, it's not. Fuck no. that sitcom. <laughs> That's the thing. I don't even like. I I just don't like Holes. I just I I've always because the whole movie is just about a bunch of. Well, juveniles digging holes, and I don't... Uh, 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 it is more than that. It's basically that. <laughs> I mean, it's, that's like, if you base oh, premise, don't sure. don't have a title. Well, if we're, if, we're go, <laughs> if we're going that far, the lighthouse is about two dudes going crazy in a lighthouse. Yeah, but like, it's... It's, it's about like, more than that, mother... Where? Yeah, but it's got layers to it, whereas holes, there's not... I don't see the layers there, I see... Oh. The lay the layers is a, a bunch of the layers is about. about a family that has been cursed for generations to get fucked over just because a dude could not carry an old woman over a mountain. So years later, his descendant takes that other person's descendant, rides them on their back, sips splooge on top of a mountain, and then fucks Sigourney Weaver out of an entire treasure trope. How can you just say it's just about juveniles? Digging holes! And the remote just fell down. Well, that's the thing. I don't... All that doesn't sound as interesting to me as a Lovecraftian, like, just movie <laughs> dedicated to just two actors. You just... better call this episode Holes versus The Lighthouse. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I am not comparing Holes. Please. <laughs> Lighthouse. God that damn it. This is the funniest segment of this episode by <laughs> far. Like, straight up, just this... Just like, could you imagine our uh, like our beautiful audience at home? Just like one man's on the shitter, someone's in the bathtub, someone's like cooking dinner for their loved ones, and then just like, oh man, this is relaxing. This is kind of funny hearing them talk about the lighthouse, and then just a whole fucking five minute section <laughs> of us comparing holes to the lighthouse. <laughs> no. Yes. <laughs> We, if we ever uploaded this to YouTube, like, somebody would have to timestamp it of, hey, if you want to skip the random holes debate, <laughs> here you go. It's fucking random. Like, okay, so back to Lighthouse. <laughs> like, he sees him jerking off, and my whole thing is that later on in the movie, Willem Dafoe, like, whenever Robert Pattinson has that scene where he says, I'd fuck that steak, he flips out, and Willem Dafoe starts just going crazy and puts a curse on him. And he goes, Hark! You know, and starts saying, I hope that the spear of Trident cuts you open, and I hope you get that light in the lighthouse and you get burned, and I hope you break your leg, and I hope you fall down a flight of stairs, and I hope that you get fucking seagulls and the spirits of all these sailors eat you to death from your gut. I hope you die in 9-11 in that weird movie <laughs> called Remember Me. <laughs> but like, really, like in the, when you look at the end of the movie, all of that happens. He does threaten, he does, he, he curses him with that. And everything that happens by the end of the movie is exactly everything Willem Dafoe threatened for him, like wanted to happen to him after yes. he had shit talked his food. So my theory for the Sea King, the I, how many theories do we have here? About three? Three or four? <laughs> this is the first one we've gotten into because of that fucking holes debate. <laughs> so this is, I guess this is the first one. And so, like, the theory is that it's this sea king. 
that's fucking with him and trying to appease this mortal and keeping him in this loop of just feeding him lobster all the time and getting him drunk and being like, enjoy the sea, you know, and Robert Pattinson's like, dude, I just want to save that money and go home and get laid or some shit. Yeah, no. <laughs> Regular dude stuff. Weirdly, the, the, weirdly the most sane one of the two. Right, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And so, like, what messes with me is that if, if that is true and he is the sea king, then how is, if he is the sea king from the, you know, from the ocean, with this mythical powers and all these fucking, like, tentacles and shit and, like, you know, horns from fucking, uh, you know, coral. Crustacean. Crustacean, yeah. Then, like, how is he able just to get axed off like that by Robert Pattinson so easily at the end? Because he just puts an axe in his head and he's done. Well. Don't think that, that you can put well, out a sea king that easy. Well, uh, here, here's the thing with most, like, sea folk in general. They are, in fact true yeah and also the, like an axe to the head would probably kill anything yeah but like the way they describe it in this with the, like the way this movie has it set up with their lovecraftian elements it's so supernatural like even the siren like it's so supernatural that it shouldn't be it, it doesn't feel like it would be that simple not to me i don't know why and so that's why i have a hard time grasping the sea king thing plus Willem Dafoe is going just as crazy as he is and so if he was already the sea king the whole movie then he wouldn't be Insane. Could, could, no. could, it could have been due to the constant exposure to the uh, whatever squid inside the crystal. At That's the top true. Of the House. Because you mentioned, you, uh, you you said that you're. Go ahead and say your theory before I get to my other two. Uh, like what you think is in this like light in the lighthouse that Robert Pattinson is constantly trying to get to throughout the whole movie. Um, in terms of what I believe it could be. Uh, well, first, okay, I would honestly believe that it is some sort of Lovecraftian demon that Willem Dafoe has actually been taking care of and fostering Which this entire time. Which one do you think time. it is? Do you think it's Sugaroth, uh, Shubnigaroth? Uh... I, I don't really have that kind of knowledge, to be honest with you, because I don't really know Lovecraft lore very well. I, I say some... Lovecraftian monster just because that's kind of, I know what the general idea of what that means. Well, that's the thing, I don't think there's any actual, like, Lovecraft, like, monster. Okay, well, okay, well, no actual Lovecraft lore. No, no, like, I don't think it has that Lovecraft lore in it, essentially, but I do think there is elements of his horror in this, but it's not... It's its own thing. Like, it mm. actually definitely is its own, like, scary, like, sea story. Like, like, mm. like it's the worst thing that could happen if you were stranded on an island at sea. Yeah. Uh, but... You go like, crazy with your senior, right. and there's a fucking monster inside of the fucking crystal. <laughs> right, but do you think there's a monster inside the crystal, and that's the tentacle creature that's kind of infecting I, Willem Dafoe and making him I, crazy? I honest, I honestly do believe that it's real. I don't think it's just, it's you know, bad. yeah, I don't think it's just in his head. I mean, they're both crazy by the end of the movie, sure. But um, Willem Dafoe, him constantly like going up there, looking inside, and seeing something beautiful. Like I know drunk people can do weird shit, but I'm like, I don't know. If he kept going up there, there must have been something up there that kept him coming back outside of a shiny light. Right. Yeah. So I honestly, I honestly think it's more than likely real, as well as the factor of the supernatural elements of the movie. I mean, yeah, a lot of it's up to interpretation, yeah. but a lot of it's also very overt. Like, um, for example, the the freaking wind changing after he murders the seagull, specifically after he does that, as well as, you know, like you had said like... earlier with the curse. Everything that he cursed him with ended up, you know, coming true, and I think mm-hmm. that's, you know, that's the big thing with Willem Dafoe. Is that, you know, that's why he more than likely killed his old person that he was with, because they both probably fought over this thing, and that's why he kept, you know, Robert Pattinson out of that, because he knew he'd probably lose, because he's yeah. a much younger dude. Yeah. So, more than likely, I, I do think whatever in it is real, and... He's also a leg down, Willem Dafoe, by that, the way, to add on to your thing about being beaten mm-hmm. by someone younger. Yeah, that that's probably, yeah. you know, why the leg was, you know, why his leg got busted in the first place, yeah, so... Yeah. You know, that's that's where my thought and where, you know, where my camp goes, as well as the factor of Robert Pattinson in the end. I mean, yes, he's clearly crazy and definitely shit's going on in his head. But I also think it's like, I don't think he would have had that reaction 
if there was just nothing in there. Yeah. So that's that's primarily where my mind goes for it. Plus that, as well as the factor of um. Let me uh, fuck. I lost my train of thought there for a second. Uh, catch up with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, you just, just, ladies and gentlemen, I say shit, and then my brain needs to be like, "Can you shut up for a sec?" So this I can is think. the Aaron uh, brain freeze the, portion of the show. The Aaron <laughs> enigma. The Aaron enigma, as I like to call it. Uh, well, to I guess to 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 pull from that theory about you thinking that it all actually is happening, and he, it, it, it's not. Things that are happening in Robert Pattinson's head the mm-hmm. whole time. Uh, there is also the theory that I had that what if, and there's a scene that actually I think backs this up, and I'm about, I'll explain it. But the theory states that Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson are actually the same person, and they're the mm-hmm. same character. And Willem Dafoe is t- Tom from the future, which, and they both have the same name, they both are named Tom Thomas. Uh, whether their last names are different, but their first names are exactly the same, and they're both here trying to, you know, get past some shit, and Willem Dafoe, we never really figure out why he's here, other than he's just, he's been here a while, whereas Robert Pattinson's here because he's got fucked up issues with his dad and where he's from, and he's trying to start over, and uh, throughout the whole movie, Willem Dafoe's being like, don't spill your beans. Well... So, like, that, that's that's what he says. He's like, don't mm-hmm. spill the beans on your stuff. Just don't talk about it because it's bad mojo. And so my theory goes that what's going on is that Robert Pattinson's in this loop and he's stuck with this older version of himself that's trying to stop him from making the same mistakes he did and trying to make sure that he isn't getting obsessed with this light and isn't wanting to fuck a fucking siren and isn't trying to kill his maid. And did, he's basically trying to stop him from becoming him. And, okay, so, you think about it, and the scene, okay, you know that scene I was telling you about that's very, it's a parallel to Prometheus? Uh, this whole movie is yes. a parallel to Prometheus, but this scene especially just, you know, puts the hammer in the coffin for me. Where, and, he's, where he sees himself. Yeah, yeah, and so, like, he sees a younger version of himself, and he turns over, and there's Willem Dafoe naked, shining lights into his eyes. That exact frame is from a, an ancient, like an old painting about Prometheus doing the same thing to someone else. But what's so interesting is I think what's going on in that scene, because it's a, it's kind of a nightmare sequence, but I think what's going on is that Robert Pattinson, when he turns the other Robert Pattinson over, that is younger Willem Dafoe. That's Willem Dafoe when he's young. And you know, after like getting obsessed with the lighthouse for the first time, and he's turning over and seeing old Willem Dafoe being like, you don't need to be doing that. And that's why he's shutting lights in his eyes. It's being like, you know, here's the knowledge of, I, you know, not doing that kind of thing. I mean, I mean, the time loop can be supported by, by a few things as well. It's like, um... Time keeps going out of sequence. Not only that, that could also explain why after, like, Willem Dafoe has, like, given up on possibly, like, whenever Robert Pattinson tries to leave, he tries to kill him. Yeah. So that could also be interpreted as Willem Dafoe, as Older Thomas, trying to kill himself to stop this shit from continuing, but yeah, he always he sees destined to fail. Yeah, always trying to at the stop that endless loop. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and there's also uh, the other thing too is that like he's so obsessed with this light himself that like he doesn't want to share it, and so maybe this version, like this adult Thomas, this well the, they're both adults, but this old Thomas that Willem Dafoe is playing has already went through all the stuff that Robert Pattinson's going through, and then Robert Pattinson kills him. And then because of that, he goes down that path that Willem Dafoe is going to go to, to where Willem Dafoe essentially is going to be where the movie begins. And that's just, that's the loop. See, it's like poetry, it rhymes. (laughs) (laughs) But, (laughs) so, and then that theory, uh, the other thing too is that like they, they, like they never explain why Willem Dafoe's there. We know where Robert Pattinson's there, and then Willem Dafoe... Kind of is like, why are you spilling your beans? And that's whenever you see that scene with the mm. Prometheus references. And the whole movie's splash montage of the story of Prometheus. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of put on its head. Um, there's a lot of parallels in it, especially with that. Like, that frame is an exact rip-off of yeah. that painting. 
That's not a bad like thing. Not, okay, okay, no, okay. okay. Do this well, fucking time. well, well, okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say rip off because rip off does have that negative stigma well, attached to it. I would say like, homage. You know, yeah, very homage. much a homage. It's very much like them just doing that exact same. Like the framing and everything looks exactly the same. Like the only thing different is that Willem Dafoe's naked and Prometheus <laughs> isn't <laughs> in the painting. Uh, but. Um, that's why I think that. And then that would make more sense as to why when Willem Dafoe gets axed off, it's not him being some <laughs> sea king. It's <laughs> him being... Axed off. Well, well you know what I mean, yeah. No, no I know he what does. you mean. It's just fun. No, it's funny. <laughs> well, that's the thing. He, he does. He gets... Basically, an axe gets buried into his head after he just got buried alive, for the most part. Eating dirt. You see Willem Dafoe eat actual dirt. Just, season. just to prove the amount of dedication that this man has. Okay, I guess we gotta. Before I talk about the next theory, we gotta talk about uh, the siren sex scene. Uh, so I thought it was real fucked up and real funny that Robert Pattinson, when he's like, like holding onto the statue of this mermaid, you know, this sea lady or whatever, because he's got the little statue that they've mm-hmm. got in the bed in the beginning. He's looking at it and he's jerking off. And he's staring at this thing, and he keeps seeing all this crazy shit. He keeps seeing him drowning because the siren pulls him in the water. He sees his dad before his dad drowned, I guess. And then he also sees, uh, he's also getting obsessed with that lighthouse and how he can't get in there, and he's not allowed to look at the light or anything, and Willem Dafoe's taking it. And then he also starts, like, imagining, because he's trying to jerk off, and, you know, get off, essentially, he's imagining fucking this mermaid. And what's so, like, the siren, and what's so messed up is that, like, some of her fins, <laughs> like, it, it looks like, uh, like, a fish pussy. <laughs> Essentially. <laughs> like, I'm not, I don't, I don't know how to no, talk no, about it, it other than it, saying how it is. It I, like I, a, I mean, that's, I, I, mean, I mean, they also need <laughs> to convey where the hell his penis is going yeah, in this yeah. fantasy. So, of course, oh. in his head, he makes up, like, oh, hey, fish penis. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> Not fish penis, fish penis. vagina. That would be a fucking twist. Oh, fish penis. Pe- It'd be a penis with gills. or some shit on it. Like, <laughs> oh, I don't want to imagine that. That's gross. Wow, Aquaman <laughs> 2 getting real <laughs> insane. <laughs> oh, man, I can't wait for the deep spinoff. Oh my god, do you think that's what the fucking fish dude from Invincible? You think that's what you got going on down there? (laughs) I do think that. But like, so, no, but like, okay, so. He's fucking this lady, and like, what's messed up is that because there's so much stuff you can leave to interpretation. Who's to say he didn't actually fuck the damn thing and was jerking off to that, and like jerking off to the memory of that while holding on to this piece? I mean, I mean, I'd say he probably. I mean, I was going on. I was going. You can argue on. that, but I don't think. I don't think that happened. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I was going in on you know how the creature is more than likely real. Oh. But yeah. I, I more or less think that. Um, I think. The siren uh, oh yeah. That. Um, get, getting back to what uh, theory, my my train thought finally yeah, came yeah. back to the station okay, is that um i really do think that's what you know enticed willem defoe is that uh, odds are every time he goes up to there um the thing that made him the victor and made him so uh, obsessed with it is that the creature had probably promised him some type of pleasure like hey i will make you a sea god and yeah, I, you yeah, know yeah. and you know eventually okay. it's giving him this type of you know curse shaman shit where he's like able to curse fucking um robert pattinson's character mm-hmm. And how all of that is completely fucking accurate. Um, and that's another big thing. that That's probably also what the creature wanted as well. Which was, it's probably like, okay, Willem Dafoe, he's probably not going to work out. So I, I want the young Twilight man meat over here. So I'm going to start fucking with his head. And then whenever he eventually kills Willem Dafoe, hey, he's going to be mine. Uh, the only thing that didn't work with that is that some of the power that Willem Dafoe probably had received, you know, it had backfired in the creature's... Um, in the creature's uh, less favor, in right, that right, Robert right. Pattinson had ended up dying, and that could also lead to why, in the end, Robert Pattinson's getting devoured by the seagulls. Is that too much of this? You know, curse was working against him, right, and then right. eventually this forced the creature to leave, which would make the lighthouse disappear. That's true. Yeah, because that's the thing—you don't see the lighthouse at the end. Like yep. for all you know, the rocks you're seeing around Robert Pattinson is the rubble of the damn thing. 
Well, we don't know. Either that or it just never... <laughs> even, either Maybe either it was never there. Yeah, it was possibly never there or the creature just completely conjured it up. No, really if the creature's no longer there, then that means, you know, the place doesn't exist anymore. Well, there's a few scenes where, like, they talk about time. Like, the first time they mention it, like, Robert Pattinson, like, they... It's the first... It's the night... It's the day they're supposed to leave. And at the end of that night, they're like, they he, they, they didn't show up. And then the next day rolls around. Robert Pattinson's just doing all his routines, and he's exhausted. He's clearly worn out. He's, he's slowly delving into that, you know, trip to madness. And what ends up happening is that uh, they're working on a bunch of shit, like in like one of the sections of the island that are like helping run the lighthouse. And Willem Dafoe's like, "We've been here for like a month. We've been here mm-hmm. for almost two months since we were supposed to be picked up." Mm-hmm. And Robert Pattinson's like, "What? No, that was like two days ago." He's like, "No, that was like a month." And so, like, Robert Pattinson's not even being able to keep up with time. Which is why that just further adds on to my argument. He's not a reliable narrator. We can't trust Robert Pattinson's character in this. I we mean, can't we, we can't trust... Comments. We cannot we can't trust, trust anyone. Yeah. No. Yes, exactly. You can't trust anyone in this uh, story is the thing. And so that's why I'm like, look, he's not... That, that's my argument for why he's not a reliable narrator. Is because he's losing track of time. And we're seeing a lot of crazy shit that we don't know is real or what. And, and on top of all that, he, plus, he's trying to fuck a fucking siren, so... <laughs> nah, now that I think about it, A24 films have never had a non-unreliable narrator. Oh, no, no. Like, no, not really. That's, that, that is very true. Real quick, I just want to say, you can listen to our podcast on Spotify, Anchor FM, Pocket Cast, Breaker, Google Podcasts, and Radio Public. We're also very creative people with creative ambitions and goals. So if you can, be sure to check out Tobias's Wattpad screenplays on www.wattpad.com slash user slash MrDarkman23. Also be sure to check out the artists of said stories at www.deviantart.com slash lonelysolipsist23. You can also hire us for your screenplay writing on writers.work slash draperworks. If you have an original story or an already published story like Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, and you'd like us to read it in our immaculate voices, be sure to send it our way. Now, back to the show. But, like, so, what, even crazier, to even further prove my point, is that he's just, he's just obsessed with this damn lighthouse. And, like, he even gets madder in hell. Like, he gets mad that he's losing his pay, but he doesn't really get mad about him losing his pay. He gets mad that he's not able to work, because he, when he begs, whenever he finds out his pay has been docked, he's like, just let me work again, but please, please, please let me work that lighthouse. And it's like, there's nothing really, like, I know that there's something crazy and wild and magical in it that he's trying to fathom and understand, but really, like, if, okay, if Willem Dafoe wasn't going crazy and he was just some regular dude, there's nothing impressive up there other than a really pretty light. (laughs) I, I mean, yes, of course, but that also kind of feeds into, like, the certain psychology. So, like, per se, you are... You know, you know, it's sort of like you know how the past year, how the past like year of twenty twenty went for most people. Yeah. It's really just that you know the mundane. It. Yeah, it's like when you're stuck inside for that long and all you have is the inside. It's like even the tiniest bit of opportunity that's even slightly new, you will fucking take it. Yeah, and especially yeah. for like you know like um, Robert Pattinson's character, he goes it's through that, a lot of shit. Yeah, a lot. And, you know, he deals with Willem Dafoe, and he has been up and down this island. The only place he has not been is the top of that lighthouse. Yeah. That is that is the only place he has been everywhere. You know, whereas, like, uh, Willem Dafoe has been in the lighthouse the entire time, going back and forth between that and the house, and he doesn't, he doesn't even really explore the island. No, he doesn't. So, He's so, like, always in the lighthouse, uh, just... Hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. So, you know, that's what entices Robert Patterson. It's like, hey, Willem Dafoe, I mean, he's crazy, but he hasn't, like, gone crazy like me. He's fucking content, so something fucking rad must be up there, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing, is that, like, uh, he's even being like, oh, I don't want to be here with a madman, but it's like, you're just as crazy as Robert Pattinson is. Because, mm-hmm. like, hell, he curses, he literally puts a curse on him just because Robert Pattinson confessed that he didn't, he got tired of eating fucking lobster all the time. Like, that. <laughs> like you, the fuck off. How petty she, can you be? Which even then, right after that, he's like, all right, have it your way. I like your cooking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this movie's really funny. There's a lot of honesty. really funny stuff, but, like, it's not funny, like, in the way a comedy is. 
It's just more in the sense of just like they're just going fucking nuts. And when you're crazy, you do crazy <laughs> things. Uh, and there's just more crazy funny shit in this. Man, I want to see an edit of that entire scene, except after he says, you have it your way, I like your cooking, then afterwards, like, a fucking stupid laugh track place. <laughs> <laughs> like Seinfeld. Sign- <laughs> <laughs> bam, bam, that's all right, have it your way, I like your cooking. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> but, like, uh, so, what's another theory that we had about this that we were talking about? Mm. Oh, uh, there is one theory that I heard about where... Uh, this I do find some stock in this. So, as as soon as Robert Pattinson confesses his sins, from then on, he's dead. And the theory goes that what happened there is that so that scene I was talking about with the Prometheus stuff, when he sees that younger version of himself, the theory goes that when he sees that younger version of himself, that's actually him looking at his dead body essentially and so the whole movie they're both already dead uh at that point we just don't know when they died i don't i like i like it because that works for that scene but for everything else it doesn't and it's just because well you never really see anything to back up them dying now to be fair robert pattinson does like you know fall down a bunch whenever he's you know near those rocks when he does see the Siren, but I don't think he falls on anything that could like actually hurt his head or nothing enough to fucking no. kill him. Well, oh well, <laughs> well, I mean, okay, there, there's a bit of room for debate there, given there's a bunch of jagged fucking rocks on that. That's island. true, but you don't actually see him like his face or anything make actual impact on there. And so, well, to be fair, you don't really see a lot of things that could like like at the end, whenever he falls down the. Well, okay, I guess we got to talk about. All right, I guess we got to talk about the ending. And, why? I mean, we've already talked about the end. <laughs> yeah, well, okay, so, like, at the end, what happens is he gets up, he kills he kills Willem Dafoe, after Willem Dafoe just puts an axe in his shoulder, which, by the way, he doesn't react to at all. Uh, it's like, that Batman training. <laughs> well, yeah, but, like, really, like, with, in this, he's just so mad and so insane and so fucking psycho and batshit at this point, <laughs> he... The axe hits him in the arm. He doesn't even really flinch to it. He kind of just looks at it and then hits Willem Dafoe in the face with whatever's, you know, liquid. Because they run out of drinks at one point. And so they start having to make their own. Now, what I think's going on, you said it was probably some seawater. I th- no, I, don't, I, I think they were drinking that for a while, but I think at that point they're uh, making some weird shit out of their pits and they're drinking it and that's there, further out there, there's the that and whatever the hell they were putting in it that looked like fucking vaseline that yeah like it like I, I remember when i first watched it i was like is that honey and i was like they wouldn't have honey on this fucking island like yeah, no I, I mean it's possible as a ration but i doubt it because the only rations they have is a big box of vodka a I, big box of vodka i i, I know um, it, it's really just like, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm right there with you. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what in the hell, <laughs> they, yeah. They, they, yeah, what in the hell they put inside of that. that's the thing, I don't know what exactly that was. That's why the only thing I could think of is that it had to be something, especially back in those times, because this takes place in like the 1800s, right? Mm, something I believe. Like that. Yeah, I believe. so like, I think that they had some certain way they had to make piss into water and that was it. And it looked like they were. Because, like, okay, like, in, in to, in, in, if that's true, then the thing that Robert Pattinson hits Willem Dafoe with before he puts an axe in his head, uh, he drinks out of it, which means that before he goes up to the actual light, he's drinking piss. Mm. Uh, and then laying it down, and then he crawls up the, you know, damn lighthouse, he gets up to the top, and he finally is able to open it, and then when he does, he puts his hand in the the lamp and it, it stops and it opens to him like on its own he he doesn't pull any levers he just opens the door and it doesn't and he puts his hand in it and he starts screaming now it starts out he's well he puts it's hesitant and he's like loving it like he's enjoying the feeling but then as soon as he puts his hand deep enough in this light he just starts it it's like he's in pain like he's hurting but he's liking it at first but then it gets to a point That's a new he, sensation. <clears throat> well, yeah, yeah, but it's supposed to be, because, like, for him, because he's crazy, he thinks it's, like, it's 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 kind of like with Hellraiser. It's, like, you know, hell, like, it's pain, and also, like, like, 
pleasure at the same time. So he thinks it's that at first, but after a while, you start to tell it looks like he's just legit, like, in complete agony. And then he trips off those stairs, breaks his leg, it, and this also adds to my old theory with the whole uh, him and Willem Dafoe being the same person. Uh, he breaks his leg, the same leg Willem Dafoe has that's broken the whole movie, and he goes down the stairs and essentially died. <clears throat> that's the thing, is that if the movie ended there, it could be implied he died down going down the staircase, but it doesn't. It fades to white, and then it goes over to the... You know, the actual island itself, there's no lighthouse, and he's naked, his eyes are missing, and his guts are hanging out, and the seagulls, or in this case, the spirits of other sailors that have died at sea, are eating his gullet, just mm -hmm. like Willem Dafoe's curse said. Now, oh, and I guess another thing to add to the Sea King thing is that he did put a curse on him, and that did exactly happen. A Sea King would have the power to put a curse on someone that would come to pass. But I also think if it's... If it's them being the same person, then all you gotta do is say that he puts such stock in fish talk and like the the rules of the sea and all the superstitions of it, and they're true. And so, in a way, he's right, and he learned that because he was Robert Pattinson before, and learned those mistakes by fucking up with his will and the foe, you know? Mm -hmm. I feel bad for the people listening to this because they're not going to understand. None so of this is coherent. No, because like we're because we don't even remember the characters' names. <laughs> we just watched it. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, let's be more specific. So Thomas kills Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, well, that's the thing. What are we supposed to do? <laughs> but no, like that's that's the thing is that like because of that little bit at the end, I have a hard time really figuring out what happened. It very much has that Nolan esque, you know, like. Mm -hmm. Inceptionness to it, in a way. But it also has a lot of Lovecraft to it, too, because Lovecraft, all his stuff is about, like, going crazy. I, I, I would kind of <clears> say <throat> Nolan's is, like, in all, in all honesty, I, I, I like taking the wind out of the sails of this movie a little bit. I don't think Inception's exactly all that complicated, in all it's honesty. It's not complicated. Because it's, it's like, it, it, in all honesty, I, I think the ending means that Leo's in the fucking dream. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, spoilers for a ten-year-old movie, everybody. Well, <laughs> I actually am going to do an episode. I'm wanting to do an episode on that at some point. I already made the cover for it and everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, I know that like uh, I love Christopher Nolan. But mm, the yeah. thing is, I actually, to be fair, I uh, you can leave that to interpretation though because it does wobble at the end, like that split second. Uh, the top does. But I think I, I think that's do, more physics than anything. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> this thing you can't argue with physics, and so I can't really argue with that. But you can also say because the dream shit doesn't make sense anyway. Like you're able to fucking spin buildings and stuff. So plus, can, plus he was real deep in that dream when yeah, that there dude was no when that dude that. woke up. He was deep in that dream. But that's the but that's the thing is that uh, because I I do see that this has like a Nolan askness to it like not uh, not really with the complexity just more of how the story's told mm -hmm. it does kind of have that vibe to it because it's just you're kind of shown a lot of stuff and you still don't really get all the answers because like well like we said earlier this is very much left open interpretation I could think of like two or three theories already but like none of them I can't really get a definitive answer. Because the Sea King one, that one can be canceled out because of so much stuff that happens in the movie. Um, and then there's also the factor that, like, you look at... Like, and the only one I can really get to that's, like, close to anything is them being the same person. And it's just because it does feel like they're in this cycle of just going crazy no matter what. Um, and Willem Dafoe... The first thing he does when he gets there is he goes up to the lighthouse and just mm. gets naked and just sits there drunk. And so I do... Th and, and the thing is, is they both have this obsession with jerking off all the time in private places. So you can even have... You can even leave it to interpretation that Robert Pattinson, the whole movie, is getting crazy because he doesn't have a good place to masturbate at. Because look where he's going at. He's going in like a... Going in like shack. a shed. Yeah, he's going in like yeah. a small shed he can't even fit in. And like he's screaming like a yeah. fucking weasel. He's, he's not going to go out... <laughs> he's going to go outside because then the birds, they're going to fuck with him some and more. And will just watch him at that lighthouse. Which, yeah, uh, which he does. Uh, like he... That's him. That, he even... like, And they don't start fighting at the end until he, you know, 
tells him, he's like, I saw you kill that seagull. It's your fault. All this shit's happening. Uh, you, you didn't spill your beans, but you sprayed your beans everywhere. <laughs> that scene, though, it's crazy. Like, I don't think he killed an actual seagull. Like, absolutely not. But Well, well uh, okay, okay. Not movie-wise. Like, yeah. movie-movie-wise. Like, but the, but the plot... You, Yes, like, I, I would say movie, he actually bashed like, a seagull's face yeah, in. Yeah, like, making the movie, like, behind the scenes, I don't think it was a real seagull. I think that they, by the way, the visual effects on this thing are amazing. Like, there you go. The imagery in this. It, it definitely looked like he beat a seagull to death. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it did look legit like that. And it was, and I, I'm not about, you know, killing animals and stuff, but that, like we were saying earlier. I mean, that bird had it coming. That bird had I'll, it coming. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be and, you know, I'll, I'll have the dick. balls to say it. That bird had it he coming. Had it coming. <laughs> it was being a dick and it kept just it was pushing his buttons to the point where like you know i would have killed this fucking thing yeah it was just being a fucking asshole and like it just had something it just it just had some sort of aggression toward him that i don't You're think it was warranted because he's just doing his job whether it's poor or not that's up to you you know it was like specifically taunting him yeah. Like yeah. Willem Dafoe never had to square down with this seagull. Like it was, it was just, it was just fucking Robert Pattinson. He's like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm gonna mess with this motherfucker. Dude. It's, it's like initiation. It's like a college initiation. Like, yeah, if you can stand the seagull, you get in the <laughs> sorority, bitch. Do you think the seagull that's pissing him off the whole time is just the Twilight fans being like, we liked you better in Twilight, and he just, you know. It's Taylor, nice. it's Taylor Lautner. <laughs> you for, stole my career, you son of a bitch! <laughs> come back for the next Twilight. They made another Twilight book. Did you know that? Yeah, I know. I don't care either. Oh, you know what's worse? They remade the first one. Oh. They rewrote the damn thing, man. Well. <laughs> so wait till well, they redo those again. Well, okay. It's Here, be fucking okay, okay, here's the thing. It's here's the, here's something that I always find yeah. interesting. Is that give give a writer you know you take their first work ask them to rewrite it years later they're probably going to do something different yeah like I mean uh, not not something different exactly say like plot wise because odds are they'll probably keep the plot the same but in terms of how we get there probably different you know I I would definitely say that you know uh the you know just just random side topic um odds are George Lucas would probably do the prequels different now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, he yeah. he would he would more than likely do different things now for them. Yeah, yeah. In all likelihood. Well, that's the thing. Is a lot of that has to do with the fact that like he was trying to do that Clone Wars show, and the only reason that like with uh, <laughs> Gary Tartakovsky, and the only reason that that even kind of happened was because he was just trying to get set up. He was trying to set up Grievous and stuff. For yeah. Into the Sith, but. Um, yeah, it did way more than just that. <laughs> yeah, that's the only interpretation of Grievous I think that's actually been good is the Tartakovsky version. Yeah, because that one's actually scary. But you know, like that's in like he, then he he got Dave Filoni to do the 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 new Clone Wars, and it was because he was like, look, I think stuff should have been fleshed out better, and I know I fucked up. Can you do this? And he understood that Dave Filoni loved Star Wars as much as he did, and so he was like, here. Uh, but, like, that's the thing with this, this movie, is that, like, you can tell every shot, every line, every single moment in this movie is something that the, this, this, that the director really, really wanted to film. Yeah. It doesn't... Undeniable. It doesn't feel like a fucking cash grab product, like, a lot of the, like, the Amazing Spider-Man movies, for example. <laughs> or, you know, like, uh... <laughs> That'll be a topic for another day, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I'm dreading it. <laughs> I really don't want to truck through those movies again, but I know I'm going to have to, uh, just to get them out there. Hey, man, Still. why do you think I didn't want to do the Suicide Squad oh, comparison yeah. one? <laughs> I don't want to do that either, but the upside is that what I'm going to do for that is I'm setting up this thing where I'm going to have a segment called the, the Shit Stamp, and at the end... The I'm, Shit Stamp. I'm going to yeah, so like, the Shit Stamp, I'm going to make it to where uh, each episode of the Shit Stamp is us talking about really, really bad movies, and at the end of every episode, the outro is a really loud, really gross fart noise, and that is the shit stamp being put on. <laughs> uh, so that's kind of my idea for what I'm going to do there. Uh, the whole... Basically, I'm setting it up to where, like, when we review bad movies, it's going to be the shit stamp uh, we use. Also, real quick, I know this isn't even really the episode, but I just want to go ahead and say it. You people wanting the air cut, good, good for you. Stop it! <laughs> 
Yeah. There's I'm no kidding. good movie there! Well, that's the thing. I, I think I mentioned that in one of my other episodes, is that I don't really give a shit about the whole air cut thing. And it's because, like, everybody's trying to get... It's because of the Snyderverse thing. They think it's the Snyderverse stuff, but Snyder didn't really have anything to do with that movie. I don't... It's, if he did, he definitely doesn't want anything to do with it now. No, absolutely. <laughs> and, like, it's because he strayed so far from what David Ayer was trying to do. And David Ayer, let's face it, I know that you like one of his movies. Or at least uh, you told I, me. I like End of the Watch. I think End of the Watch is... It's by no means perfect, but I think it's fairly well done. I think that's probably the best movie that... Um, I think I think Michael Pena is the one in that movie. Uh, Jake right. Gyllenhaal, of course, always does a great job. Right. Um, yeah. But so, like like him and Michael Pena do really good in that. Um, I think I think in all honesty, it's a pretty pretty fine cop movie. It won't change your life, but I think I think it's a fine movie. Well, that's the thing. I I don't think David Ayer makes good movies at all. I don't think any of his films have been good. Mm. And I was telling you in the car earlier that there was uh, like I was on Instagram one time and I was talking to somebody and they were like, <laughs> well, basically they were making fun of like. Well, they were being like, hey, I'm really excited for the David Ayer cut. What about you guys? And I looked at the comments, and all these people were like, oh, man, this one's going to be great. That other one, like, the James Gunn one sucks. And I got real pissed. What? And I commented, well, yeah, I got pissed. And I, I, I don't do this. And, but I got mad, and I commented, and I was like, David Ayer doesn't make good movies. Why the uh, fuck are you wanting to fight for a uh, movie that no one fucking cares about? Uh, a longer version of a bad movie? You really, really? Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, okay, okay. My thing is, here, here's the... Fucking shit! This was about the lighthouse. <laughs> oh, well, fucking I can, shit! I can use these this this is the Suicide Squad section of the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Might as fucking well. Well, I can add. Uh, I can actually cut it to where like uh, we can have an extra ten minute episode that's just us talking about the air cut and stuff like that. Yeah, you know what? Fuck it. <laughs> We've basically set our piece with the lighthouse anyway. The so. lighthouse is good. Ten out of ten. You ten. should watch it. Ten, ten out of. 10 for me, it's not personally. For the, 10 out of 10, yeah, yeah. Like, easily. Like, it, it's not for the faint of heart, uh, easily, but it... And, and if you want non-subtle horror, trust me, this ain't the, this ain't the film. No. It's, no. It, it's no very subtlety. subtle. Yeah. Uh, it's very, very... It's very in your face, but it's very patient about well, it. Well, yeah, that, that's what exactly what I mean by like, yeah. subtlety. There isn't, like, right, yeah. you know, per se, like a fucking Michael Myers scare in there or anyway. But, yeah, 10 out of 10... Uh, held up very well. The soundtrack's good too. I didn't mention that. Oh, the soundtrack's great. The soundtrack's, the soundtrack's so great. good. Uh, the sound editing's good. Uh, even the aspect ratio, ratio. You mentioned that, and like I wanted to say this because I mentioned it to you earlier. I think that uh, what happened because this came out in 2019. I think what happened with the Snyder cut is that Zack Snyder saw this movie, saw the Lighthouse when it came out. He was like, "I like that aspect ratio. I'm gonna do that mm-hmm. with Justice League." Just because he thought he'd be arts. I, 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 I honestly... Okay. Here, here's the thing for the Snyder Cut. I feel like... Uh, I mean, I mean, there's kind of, there's no reason for him to do it, but I think it works. I think I think it works for the Snyder Cut. I like that it's... Oh, no. I, I think like it's like very it. distinct. I like it. It's just mm-hmm. that I think that... I don't think he was him being <laughs> like... Art, like having an artistic reason to do it like Roger Eggers. I- that's his name, right? Yeah, Eggers. Eggers, like Roger Eggers did. Where he was actually trying to make just, it look just, like an old-timey movie. Which call, he does. Just go ahead and call him Eggman. <laughs> well, very fine. Well, the director, you know, like, I think that, like, as far as the aspect ratio choice goes, that was him trying to make it actually look like an old vintage movie, whereas Zack Snyder, I think he was just trying to be artsy and, you know, oh, look at me, look what I did. You know, it's like, thing. But I do, I, it works in Justice League. You know, like, yeah. I, I do like it. Like Better I, better than changing every five fucking seconds, James Wan. Yeah, <laughs> like, don't get me wrong, I like James Wan movies, it's just that I don't... Man, fuck Aquaman. Yeah, Aquaman's not Man, fuck good. Aquaman. Uh, the, the only Je- reason that movie's interesting is, you know, Jason Momoa. Yeah, uh, which, yeah, I was actually about to say, I'm like, the, the best part about that movie, hands down, is the title character himself. I think Aquaman's very good in that movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the thing is, is that, like, the only person that's really good in that movie is Jason Momoa. And it's not because of Aquaman. It's because it's Jason Momoa. Yeah, he's charismatic. Yeah. You know? And plus, also, in, in all honesty, Aquaman has had the stigma attached to him for years that he sucks. You know? You know we've yeah. seen it with characters like Deep. We've seen it with that fish dude from Invincible. Uh, we've seen it just so many countless times. Aquaman is 
considered to be a joke. So at this point, it's like, hey, let's get big buff Jason Momoa to completely overcompensate for the factor that this character is has not been well respected. And yes, I do understand that he has been good at times, but at the end of the day, it took us this long to improve him, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, the, uh, you know, the, there's kind of no excuse at this point, in my personal opinion. I mean, I hope Aquaman 2 is genuinely fucking great, but Aquaman 1, I don't think, is a very good movie. Fuck, uh, anyway, Lighthouse is a 10 out of 10. <laughs> yeah, like, Lighthouse is real good. I really like the whole, uh, I really like the, uh, man, the aesthetic, the atmosphere. Yes, so oh, very you, well done. And the, I know that I kept comparing it to Kubrick, but the only reason I was... Well, I mean, it's a very Kubrick movie. Yeah, like, you look at Kubrick, he has a lot of art house films. I don't think that he created art house style Oh, films, no. But no, I he did not. Think he he did, contributed. He but. contributed heavily, and I do think he made it very popular. Yes. With his films, because even to... Like, if it wasn't for 2001 A Space Odyssey, you wouldn't be able to have Star Wars. And if you really want to go even further, okay, because of The Shining... Okay, this is a cool little tid that I wanted to tell you about with uh, the the Shining is that like so in Batman nineteen eighty nine when they were making that uh, the reason why they picked Jack Nicholson over Willem Dafoe because he was an option he was really young at the time oh my uh, god why not him Jesus well the reason Christ. why is because they had a picture of Jack Nicholson from The Shining and oh drew yeah and it to look yeah like the yeah Joker. oh yeah that's right you told me that story yeah exactly if it wasn't for that Jack Nicholson wouldn't have become the Joker, wouldn't have had a career in the Batman movie. And so really, like, a good chunk of Stanley Kubrick movies... I'm not saying Kubrick's responsible for the success of Tim Burton's Batman, but Kubrick, if it wasn't for Kubrick, a whole ton of different movies... Like, film history would suffer heavily without his... Uh, Clockwork Orange would have never know, existed. No, yeah. Everything never, based off Shining would have never existed. Star Wars wouldn't have happened. Yep. Well, it would have happened. Okay, I mean, okay. Well, it's quite possible because that's more. I mean, I mean, yes. Two thousand one definitely played a hand in that, ball. but I'm also like Flash Gordon and Akira Kurosawa definitely played the biggest hand. I yeah, feel. yeah. But like the thing is, is that like when you look at uh, like that movie that I'm talking about, it has one Space Odyssey. Uh, it set the bar for sci-fi, and so really, like, like you and me could do a sci-fi right now, but we would have to watch 1001 Space Odyssey, because that is the, that is the to go to, you know, when it comes down to it. It's not Star Wars. It's, it's 2001 Space Odyssey. And people seem to kind of confuse that, because they think that Star Wars is the big one, and it is, but if it, re if it, 2001 contributed a lot to that, because it set the rules, and it kind of set the standard for it, and kind of kick-started that it, it popularized the sci-fi genre really yeah uh in 68 like in star trek was here at the time and star trek was not doing much like, yeah, wrong, a li a lizard in a mask i love that original <laughs> show but it wasn't doing shit yeah you know so that's the thing and the re the, and the god yeah. knows how many people are gonna come out like, after us after that comment <laughs> yeah well don't get me wrong, I love Star Wars, so I'm wanting to have episodes on it. And, oh, we are. How the fuck can we not? Yeah, exactly. We're Star Wars fans, and like, you know, we're, especially since we, you know, really have issues with the sequel movies. But the whole thing, like, my whole thing is that, like, with Stanley, I called this movie a Kubrick-esque type film, but it was because there's a good chunk of Kubrick in this. Like, a lot of his movies did kind of pave the way for these things. And it's and, and the reason why I, brought, I bring that up is because his films, like I said, they always have a different way of approaching how to tell a story. And this is definitely a very unique, different way to tell a story like this because you really do the whole time feel like you're kind of going mad watching this yourself. Yeah. Because at the end, you don't even get all the answers. Or at least I didn't get all the answers. I, I still don't even know how the ending really... I don't know the real ending. I don't know what really went down. I just know that these two people were fucking batshit insane on this fucking island. That's about all you get, like we said earlier. Um, and that's... You gotta get all your madman's knowledge and crush all, crush all those fetuses. Yeah. <laughs> and well, then you get the true ending. Well, that's what I liked uh, about the movie in the long run, is that like it was told in a very unique, strange way. In the same vein as Kubrick films that do the same thing, where they're just there's always a different way to tell the story. Yeah. And he was always and he was always trying to break the medium with storytelling. He was always trying to make something different. It was always trying to make a unique way to <sighs> approach it. And always. So 
you look at this movie and like you don't even really meet anyone else that isn't Willem Dafoe, Robert Pattinson, or the Siren. And the dad, but even then the dad is just there to fuck up Robert Pattinson. He doesn't even say a line. In most of the movie when you do see him, and it's very rare, it's in quick shot, like quick cuts. It's the back of the dude's fucking head. <laughs> so, like, you don't even really see the guy. Like, it really is just two actors well, carrying this whole movie. Yeah. You don't see, like you were saying, you don't see movies like that going on that much anymore. Yeah, no, it, it's like, I cannot honestly think of any other movie that has come out in recent times that has just starred just two fucking people. Yeah. Yeah, really. Because, like, well, a lot of it, and I, not that I'm trying to bash it here, I... A lot of it is Avengers movies and superhero films, and it usually has a big ensemble cast. And so Mm -hmm. usually you don't, especially since those are kind of the mainstream right Right. now. Which, you know, okay, I'll go ahead and say this. Is that, yes, you don't see that, and yes, in quite partial, it is due to the the now simplified market um, of the summer blockbuster, which is basically taking over the world at this point. But that also, I think, feeds into these indie films' favors. Which is, it's like, oh, hey, an indie film's coming out. It's like, oh, shit, that's different. And yeah. then, you know, a lot of people are going to flock to that. Yeah, but the sad thing is is that in the long run, uh, the movies that are making billions of dollars, like, okay, look at Rise of Skywalker. It made so much fucking money. D- forget the Disney shit. Well, I mean, even a bad Star Wars movie will make money. It made a Period. Ton of money. And did Lighthouse, was Lighthouse successful? Uh, Google, let's see! Because if it wasn't successful, then I'm going to be even more disappointed. Because I think that I had so much fun watching this movie. Far more fun watching this. Uh, that's what's so fucked up. I had more fun watching a movie about two old men getting fucking batshit insane jerking off to this fucking lighthouse and the fucking mermaid. I had more fun watching that Okay, well, it, than I it, did Rise of Skywalker. A fucking Star Wars finale. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, there's a lot, and look, it's not just Star Wars. Marvel fucks up sometimes, too. Look at Thor the Dark World. That made so much fucking money. Man, ha, man, how, man, man, how are we going to title this episode now that I think about it? I'm calling it uh, The Lighthouse. Light, the Lighthouse Clusterfuck. I'm calling it The Lighthouse and Other Shit. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, to go ahead and answer your question, the budget of the lighthouse was eleven million dollars. Eleven million, and okay. its box office was eighteen point one to eighteen point three million. Ooh, it has to well, make twenty two to break even. So I guess it it didn't make exactly all its money back. I could be wrong about that though. I I, I mean, okay. In all honesty, it made more money <laughs> than it did its budget. Well, here, well, here's the thing about A24. It's not exactly... They don't care. Yeah, no, because they will literally do anything and, Which yeah, agree. Is, well, that's why I like that A24 is the one that produced this, because they're not like Disney and Warner Brothers and fucking Sony or any other fucking... Or Fox or any other company out there. They're not worried about their box office success. They're just worried about making some good fucking content. Yeah. And it, because, well, look at back in the 80s. Or at least 90s. distinct. Like, content. it wasn't about the box office, you know, back in the day. It was about just making good shit, you know, mm-hmm. and just trying to make the best medium you could. Whether they did or not, it, you know, depends because, you know, Schumacher had the most Batman movie. But, so, like, that's just one of many examples. Yeah, how it's, uh, uh, I mean, I'll at least give them this. At least stylistically, they're very distinct. Speaking of the style, like, this movie, the style of it, it's so unique. Like, there is movies like this, but, like, I don't think there is a film that captures uh, all the things it's trying to handle and throw old, at you old, as well. Old modern, as, you know, the, the best way I can think of it right now, for lack of a better term, is that it's film, it is very old, but it is very modern in how old it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they actually, well, they definitely approach it in the style of an old movie. Like, they even at the end with the credits, as soon, like, the last shot is Robert Pattinson being his guts pretty much in his entrails being eaten by seagulls, and then it's just credits, and the credits kind of give you that, uh, not Little House on the Prairie vibe, <laughs> but they give you like, what's the, what's an old timey movie that I'm trying to think of? They give you that black and white, kid friendly, like, campy. Andy, okay, not Andy Griffith's show. <laughs> close! Fairly close, they give you that vibe. Like, oh, you just watched a happy-go movie. It's like, no, I just watched some fucked-up, like, 
Well, I think it's probably more accurate to compare it to Twilight Zone, if anything. Oh, it's very much a Twilight. Like this looks, this felt like it was like some what? really, really good Twilight Zone. Movie. Well, well, like a subtle, uh, well, like a subtle Twilight Zone. <laughs> Twilight Zone's very overt with a lot of its very concepts. Very mundane. Twilight Zone. Very mundane. Because like it is very, it's very patient. But, like, the thing is, too, is that it's very methodic in every shot, too. Like, every, like, the symmetry on this. Then then again, it's kind of like a night gallery episode, I would say. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Which, man, that show's underrated for good and bad reasons. Um, (laughs) But that could be its own episode at some point later. Night gallery's really good if you have not seen it. At least certain skits are very good. I don't have to check that out. But, like, uh, in the long run. This was a really good movie, and I think it's another one of the... Like, what's the top five A24 movies uh, right now? Fucking shit, dude. It's like one in the morning. <laughs> I yeah. can't make a top five right now. I will say that The Green Knight and The Lighthouse, I think, are my favorites. I love those movies. Let me uh, see about... They're real good. Let, let me actually check about something real quick before I say mine. I want to be sure that these That's two... That's my top two. Easily. Uh, is Green Knight and uh, Lighthouse. I'm still debating whether The Green Knight's my favorite movie, but it's hard for me to say because I love The Prestige by Christopher Nolan. That's that that's been my favorite film for a long time, and now I'm kind of like fuck. But I really, really like The Green Knight. It's got King Arthur legends. It pulls away from all the like the knight, the tropes and knightly movies, you know. And then not only that. Uh, it's a character study on a character that you usually don't see movies about, you know, Gawain, and the visual effects are amazing, and the story, it's, it's, it, it's Kubrick, but fucking, you know, like, King Arthur <laughs> tales. Mm-hmm. And so, I can't help but just be attracted to that style so much. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I'm having a hard time debating what my I, favorite movie is right now. I, um... A24 side of things, my two favorite movies that they have done are, uh, one, Hereditary. Oh, I think Hereditary, Hereditary uh, yeah. horror-wise, I think it's a fucking masterpiece. I think it's really, really fucking good. And I honestly, I d- not only that, I love it to death, I love how it's shot, I love the acting, I love, I love almost every fucking thing about it. In all honesty, I can't even think of something I hated about it. Um... And as well as It Comes at Night, which I think is grossly underrated. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Which, to be Talk fair, the marketing that. fucked it over. Because it was marketed as a very different movie. Uh, whereas, um, you know, it's like, oh, there could be a beast in the woods. It's like, oh, It Comes at Night. Uh, <laughs> we probably won't get into it this episode. But I will definitely say that's not what the fucking movie's about. No. Don't go in thinking that. It's it's not what it's about. <laughs> well, that's a, I, speaking of going into... The A24 movies and thinking you're going to get one thing and get the other. Uh, with The Lighthouse, with the way it's marketed, you don't really think it's going to have Lovecraft stuff in it. You kind of walk in thinking it's just going to be a drama about these two guys stuck in this lighthouse. They discover it some is. horrifying secrets in the lighthouse and yeah. then they make love at the end. <laughs> yeah, well, kind of, because there is scenes in this where, like, Willem Dafoe, like, at one point he does make a move to kiss him, which... And I think that's just because he's lonely. <laughs> to be fair. What do you mean? He's got a squid inside a fucking crystal. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's true. If, you're, if your theory holds up, then there is this mysterious creature that's in there. But, like, there's, like, I don't, I guess that's something we can mention real quick, too. Is like, what the fuck is in that light? Because I think it, what's going on is it's fire. And he, he, what he's seeing, because he's going crazy, is just the most beautiful crazy shit that we can't fathom or understand. And he puts his hand in it, and it just starts burning his hand alive. And at first he likes it, and then he realizes, Ow, it's fucking hurting my hand! And then he falls down the stairs and kills himself. <laughs> I, I, w- I would say it's most definitely probably like a sea god of some sort. Like, yeah, um, some sort of eldritch being. Yeah. Uh, the, re- uh, the reason I say that is, um, actually, now that I think about it, this could also feed a little bit into it. Um, whenever Willem Dafoe's up there, he never touches it. No, he doesn't. Whereas He's... Robert Pattinson does and pays the price immediately. Yes, yes. I kind of like that. Uh, has that you flew too close to the sun type yep. thing. But Willem Dafoe was looking right at it. Yeah, it was he, all he was doing was looking at it. Like, that turning was off it. To it too. Stri- strip club rules. You can look, <laughs> but you can't touch. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, but, oh, 
fucking so, see God doing a lap dance on Willem Dafoe. Where's that movie? <laughs> well, that's the thing. There is that argument to say that he is a sea god because whenever you see him with the you know, crustaceans on his head, uh, looking like the sea god he describes um, throughout the movie, you see him with tentacles and stuff trying to choke Robert Pattinson. Uh, oh yeah, I thought that was real funny in the movie where Robert Pattinson's like making him bark. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean this, this movie. Fucking the, nuts. I mean the movie's also a dark comedy. Yeah, in a way, but like I don't, I don't take it in that comedic way. It's just sinister. I take it in this real sinister. Um, I mean, you vibe. you can be sinister and funny at the same time. Look at well, e- look at Evil Dead. <laughs> well, the, well, the only reason, like, I don't, I don't see it as like cause or like, any Stephen King thing ever. <laughs> Stephen King. That's a whole. I need to do <laughs> That's a five-hour episode right there. Well, that's the thing. I actually wanted to do an episode dedicated to just talking about Stephen. Because you know how I did want to do an episode on Joss Whedon and kind of the controversies there, and I did also want to do kind of the same thing with Stephen King and be like, "Here's his good stuff. Here's all his bad shit because he's got a lot of bad stuff." Do you have uh, any idea how long we'll be there? <laughs> it's just be a while. Eh? Yeah, no. I'm like, holy shit. We like you would. We would need to get a good dinner. We would need to have fucking went to the bathroom, be ready to sit down for hours. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, holy shit! Much like this episode. <laughs> well, no, but like I, I did want to. Um, I'm eventually going to want to do a bunch more reviews for A24 movies because I am in love with that studio and their films and the films they've been producing so far. Hell, I wish that I had their marketing team for my shit. You know, if I, you know, well, 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 I'm not sure about that because A24's marketing department, or at least whoever they get to market, sometimes fucks over their movies, like in the case of It Comes at Night. That, I remember that really fucking it over. That's very true. I will say that they did mess up with that, but I don't think they messed up with Green Knight or Lighthouse. Or even the big. Yeah, no, that that was more or less audiences just not getting what A24 is, even in the slightest. Which is stupid, because, like, A24, they're all about art house films and stuff like I, that. And it's clearly obvious. All their films are that. Most of them are horror, but they're horror art house films. Uh, actually, let me look that up. Let me see how much Green Knight made. I hope it made at least decent. The last I saw, and it was when we saw it, uh, it made 10 million and it had a budget of 15 million. oh it just made two million over its budget really yeah just two million do you think that it had to do with I, covid or do you think i was... okay okay i think it's a little bit of both i think yeah. it's genuinely a little bit of both because whenever it comes to medieval storytelling right now we're all kind of used to the game of thrones witcher style type of things and that's probably what audiences had expected as well and as well as the factor of since covid's hitting us Hard all over again. Um, I, I think that definitely plays into it, which is a shame, but I'm also like, yeah, but we also have another good A24 movie out there, and I don't really think how much they make back bothers them even slightly. Well, yeah, but, like, the other thing, too, is that, like, it just it disappoints me because, like, you look at movies like Thor the Dark, like I was saying earlier, Thor the Dark World making all kinds of money, and that movie sucks. It's not a good movie. Or, like, Attack of the Clones, for example. Not a good fucking movie at all by any fucking extreme. Yeah, I mean, it's it's and, brand recognition as well. Yeah, but then you look at The Green Knight, and it's such an amazing film. Like, I'm going to be pissed if this doesn't win some sort of Oscar. Because it's so goddamn good. I, I mean, still, I mean, the Oscars are also a little bit rigged. <laughs> oh, well, I know that. I've, I've, I want to do an episode on that, too, because I don't like I mean, the A20, I mean, has A24 ever won an Oscar? I'm not sure. I don't uh, think they ever have, which I is don't very think unfortunate. They care, though. Even though, I like, like I mean, even uh, though, like, Tony Collette for Hereditary should have been nominated that year whenever it came out. Should. Tony Collette fucking killed that movie. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Carried uh, it on her fucking back. Woman's a champ. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. A lot of these A24 ma- uh, movies are fucking well cast. God so damn. well. So well cast. Like, uh, the guy they got to play, uh, you know, Gawain. Dave Patel. Yeah, Dave Patel. God damn. Yeah, really yeah. good. What the hell? Really sucks that he had to play Zuko in fucking Last Airbender. I always forget about that because I love him so much. In the to, to, okay, I want to be real. I want a whole episode on that. 
We'll have to. Do I want a episode. whole episode on Last Airbender. Just a whole episode dedicated to we it. We can do it. I I would not mind because I honestly love taking a massive shit on that movie. Well, we'll Fuck definitely it. do it. It makes me mad. <laughs> I'd be down, especially since uh, there is a lot of stuff about like with the Last Airbender studio coming up that you know like is a big deal right now. That and there's the other live ad- action adaptation that's coming out, which has me just as worried. Yeah, me too. I wasn't. I'm not at all really excited for it. Like, I'm looking forward to their animated stuff and how like they basically got Nickelodeon finally gave the Last Airbender crew their own like Marvel studio, and like their own Lucas Arts. Nah, sense. not like they got other shit going on. No, but like <laughs> now they have their own. At least like, animated wise. Yeah, but they have their own like Lucas Arts studio now, and that's. That's a big deal. Not only well it's earned, not, not only well earned, well deserved, fucking well everything. Oh, also, yeah. you cowards out there. Yeah, book two of Korra sucks. Three and four overcompensate for it. So get, get on it now. Yeah, yeah, like shit. But no, like if you love art house films and you love like fucking uh, Roger Eagers and you like A twenty four, or even if you're just trying to watch a really good horror drama comedy you know movie you should certainly watch the lighthouse it's great this movie's amazing very like, very very well done it's very a very well, well executed film like everything about it from beginning to end it's just flawless i don't really think there's a flaw in the movie because it does explain it like to be fair even if you did find a flaw it kind of would explain itself because it's so open-ended and so ambiguous Mm-hmm. It's just such a well executed movie, and it's eight. It's been a while since there's been well executed films, especially since most movies now are kind of under the reign of Disney, and so and that's not just me trying to bash Disney here, but like think about it. They own Marvel. They own. They technically own Warner Brothers and DC. If you want to get real technical, and then they uh, also. Oh, well, okay. I don't know about that. No, really. Warner look, Brothers does make just as much of a killing. Just if you look it, it up. Uh, like on the like Google pulls up and says yes they own Warner Brothers in DC it's just not like not as massively as they do Marvel it's kind of like kind of like how uh, Universal has very 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 loose rights to Hulk but they have enough to be in control of certain shit it's kind of the same we thing we will never get another Hulk movie. we're getting a She-Hulk I so, mean, yeah. It's just bullshit. Yeah, it's, right, well, I mean, I don't mind. I'm looking forward to it, but it's also like, come on, you ain't, you, you ain't even going to try and finish off Hulk, the Hulk. Hulk will never get his own movie ever again. They never could crack the code on the Hulk. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm a bit of an apologist on Incredible Hulk, the first one. But I don't even, hate it. Yeah, it's I mean, I, I, I don't hate it. I would definitely say, though, on the MCU totem pole, it is closer to the bottom. It's a grind. Yeah. Uh, but no, I... I poor, poor Edward Norton. But as I was saying, you know, like this, you know, The Lighthouse, there's not... A24, there's not a lot of movies, like each individual movie that they've made or produced or whatever, there's not really anything like their movies that's coming out. And Name me one movie with a lamb child. <laughs> yeah, like for real. like And that's a movie coming up. Like they 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 make all kinds of crazy shit and they're... They definitely are going down the right path that they need to be doing because they're not worried about box office stuff. And really... They shouldn't be. They shouldn't be. No one should be. And, like, even Marvel. Like, I don't give a shit about how much money you're making unless it's good. I mean, they're definitely getting more creative. Look at Loki. Oh, yeah. Like, and I don't think they haven't not been creative because they've, for the most part, they've made great film. Infinity War. Infinity oh, War. That's a masterpiece. Yeah. That is masterpiece from beginning to end it just doesn't drag i think end game is just as good as oh, well I personally agree. people do think it drags long as it's three hours long but i disagree i think well it's it's the way. i mean if you really want to look at it it's the end <laughs> to yeah. like a 10 year story so if anything if you want to wrap that up and do it well yeah, you, uh, three hours. <laughs> yeah three hours it's, it's, it's gonna take us 10 a while. years worth of continuity you gotta wrap up in three hours that's a lot of work but you gotta do it. Yeah. You gotta do it right. Well, it's kind of the same thing way. with Zack Snyder's Justice League. You have to set up Cyborg. You have to set up well, Flash. You have to set up Superman's debt. You know, plus, return. Plus, not uh, only that, as far as we're aware at the current moment, at least uh, I'm, I, I'm fairly confident in saying this is this is probably the last time we're ever really gonna be in the Snyderverse exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, which 
You know, I mean, I would definitely say that the Snyder Justice League gave me hope that this could have worked. Um, oh, I loved it because, like, the whole idea of like he, he, what I could, now that we have the Snyder cut, Superman makes a lot more sense now. Yes. It's because he was trying to set up the idea that Superman starting out, he sucks. <laughs> and so he wanted to make up this idea that Superman needed to have a reason to love life the way he is, like in the comics. So when he comes back to life, I do like that idea that when he comes back, all of a sudden he has a new gratitude toward it. And that's why he's touching flowers and touching leaves and being like, wow, everything yeah. is beautiful. He is that a bit, makes sense. He's he a bit snarky. I really do like that when fucking Steppenwolf swings the axe, hits him, and he's like, not impressed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but that, was like, like, that was like his Luke moment where he like dusted himself off. <laughs> but that's the thing, is that you, you, for the Snyder Cut, you really did need four hours, because you needed to, you needed Cyborg to be good. You needed Flash to be good for his scene, and like that he has at the end. You needed to basically have everybody be really, really well-developed. And they handled that very well. And that's the thing, Lighthouse, everything about this is so... It's just as, it, like, I think it's even better than a lot of the superhero films we get these days. Like, I do. Like, legit. I love this fucking movie. Uh, I'm probably going to watch it again in the next coming days. It's really good. And I'm a big superhero fan. And so, yeah. like, it's, it's it's weird coming... It's weird coming from me that I'm saying this stuff. Because when I was a kid, I remember a time when there wasn't a lot of superhero films. And what plethora of them there were, some of them were really great. Some of them were bad. Yeah. Catwoman. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a bad one. Also, I don't care who says what. The Ghost Rider Nicolas Cage movies are masterpieces. <laughs> I like the first one. I love both because they're fucking stupid. I like the first one, not the second one. It has cool stuff in it, it but I don't like it. Man, man, but how can like you it. not enjoy the awful editing? I, you know how I am, especially since I've edited a lot before. I just... <laughs> I fucking hate it. I just can't take it seriously. And that's something, too. The editor of Lighthouse, man, he did some really good uh, stuff in this. Like, he or she, whoever. The editor for fucking Lighthouse was really good. Like, having to pretty much put all these pieces together and get it all in black and white and actually make sure that everything, like, the color... Because even the color and the shadows and stuff look great. Like, you can see everything. It's not like Zack Schneider movies where, like, sometimes things are just too dark to see... Or like Joss Whedon, where everything's just kind of brightened up a lot. It's just, it's it's good. And like, like you look at WandaVision, for example, and like their black and white was good, but they had to like change certain stuff. Like with Vision, they had to paint him blue instead of red because when it was red, it was too dark for black and white, and they filmed it in black. And oh white. shit! I didn't actually know that. So they had to paint him blue instead. That's really cool. Uh, yeah, and then like add the rest in CGI. Uh, but yeah, like so. They probably had to do stuff like that. I'm sure they had to do shit like that with this movie, which is probably why Robert Pattinson's wearing red and blue the whole movie. Like, for, like I was yeah, saying earlier, yeah, it probably would have. It probably would have fucked with how the movie is with its color. Yeah, that's what I was saying because they filmed it in black and white, and so I think what happened. That's why he looks like. That's why he has that color on his, you know, <laughs> clothing. Is because it 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 popped out better in black and white. There's stuff like that that you have to consider when you're making a movie like this. And, and that's like, the man, this really is the lighthouse and other shit. Well, that's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but like, that's the thing is that it's it's there's a lot of stuff going on with this movie. There's a lot of layers, and it's really just it's quite compelling how each piece kind of fits together, and you still don't really get the answers because it's a well thought out, well crafted, just well handled film. Yeah, like from beginning undeniably. To end, like, I don't think, it's kind of like what I was saying with Kubrick, how every single shot, every single story beat, every single line, every single delivery, everything, from the beginning to end, phenomenal. Per, was phenomenal, and it was on purpose. There was no scene, like, I felt where someone just grabbed the camera and shot something that day and was done, like you do in a lot of movies we see today. It actually did feel like every decision in this movie was to just make this crazy movie that made you feel like you were going just as crazy as these fuckers were. Of course. And I really had a good time with that. I really like when movies really make you feel like the characters are, in a way. Like, I, I, you're going fucking insane. Yeah, because this whole movie's about insanity, and you really do feel that. You 
do feel like you're going crazy following these characters and trying to just figure out what the hell is going on. So that's also that also what um, ties into the aspect ratio as well. Makes you a little claustrophobic. It does make you claustrophobic, doesn't it? Yeah, mm-hmm. because it's tight. You're having to get closer and look at it. You're right. Mm-hmm. It does. Holy shit! I didn't even think about that. Yeah, it's just there's just so much layers to this damn thing, and like. I still like like we were saying we can't even really get a definitive answer for what happened, uh, and I don't, I think the director meant clearly meant to do that because every decision made in this movie was on purpose. There's only one definitive thing about the movie, and that it's a good movie. And that it's, yeah, that's actually very true. That's that's a good way to well, that's a good uh, note to end off on. If you like this fucking, if you like horror films. Please go watch the fucking Lighthouse. Because it's on Prime, and if you can't get it, go to your local store and get it. It's really good. It's worth your time. Rent it. You buy it. Watch it. It's so good. Have a steak and fuck it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, fuck it. Yeah, why not? It's great. Don't <laughs> eat lobster all the fucking time, though. Shit. Probably don't fuck a steak. I don't know how well that'll turn out for you. <laughs> I don't recommend having sex with a, a siren either. They'll try to drown you. They also don't have vaginas. <laughs> no, 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 they don't. As uh, far as I'm aware, sorry to our siren listeners. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I don't think they would be, because they can't carry electricity and stuff down in the water. They'll electrocute themselves. So you say that, but Aquaman. <laughs> that's, very, that's very true. Well, that's the end of this episode. Uh, Aquaman 2, 10 out of 10. <laughs> I love the part where Willem Dafoe <laughs> appeared in one of the dream sequences, and he's like, Ah, oh, the, the lobster is the key! <laughs> you were right about him! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>